<laughs> Kevin Samuel saying. <laughs> It's her, her camera's like mine right now. She got a fire somewhere to set up her phone. Okay, all right, all right. But yeah, that's what I'm uh that's what I need to do. Once the video is playing, I'm gonna go, you know, the screen will be up. Oh, well, you need to hurry up and do that because I didn't send that out to everybody. That's what I'm gonna tell about. something. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, I ain't said shit to nobody. I'm gonna tell did you my right text now. say send this out or did it say yeah. I'm yeah, you did. You said I'm gonna send a link out to my people's on my social media, y'all so you know. You had you had it. Matter of fact, hold on, man. Yeah, because you know, yeah. I, like I, I was gonna do the link, and then once you get it, send that out. Okay, you didn't okay. See. I'm gonna make the link and send it to y'all. There Pass we go. It around. I post some IG and Facebook. I mean, you sent the link like so late. I mean, it's just <laughs> I was down here set up right. I was about to start jer- like, really going my bag. Like fuck it, it ain't gonna happen. Right, I don't know what's gonna happen. I was about to get lit. Listen, Come on, man, because people get- hitting me with what's this. Yep. Come on, man. Send out the link so we can get the people to watch you, man. <laughs> All right, man. I'm about to send out the link because y'all dudes that, that set me up for failure here. I was at the house. I'm in my motherfucking basement. It's you know with the motherfucking. This, this uh, is the this is the thing, Marvin. All you got to do is go to our YouTube page. That's all it is, you know. If, if they watched it before, they just go right to our page, which is hey, hey, that's too many instructions, bro. All right, here I go. Here I go. I'm sending the link. I'm sending the link. Man, I feel like I feel like I just being treated bad in this situation, but you know, it's cool. You feeling peer pressure? Yeah, yeah. Like you know, everything being put on, <laughs> being put on me. It's pretty much you fucking it up. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> Mar- Mar- how's your how's your day been? Oh my. Yeah, so yeah, how, how your day been? I've been busy, man. I've been I've been doing big shit. <laughs> All right, there it is. I've been doing big shit on me. I don't know who's listening. I can't be giving out too much info. All right, okay, I got you. Here we go. I'm sharing it. Now here you go. I'm sending it right now. So you can send it out to everybody, okay? Mm-hmm. Every, right. every, everybody, everybody. Listen, I ain't saying shit. I, I believe you. I believe you. Yeah. If you catch this on my behalf, much love to you. All right, all right. So I, I sent, I sent that, and I'm also gonna put it on my Instagram. So if anybody just you know see my story, they know to come on out and see us on YouTube Live. All right, another Marlo just popped up. Is that you, Pippin? Yeah, I'm gonna do my hits. Say that. Say that again. I'm gonna do my um, tab. Oh, okay, so he's okay. Cool, cool. So that way you can text and do the show. I got you. All right. See that? You, can, you can be a moderator. Right? See that? You can be a moderator. Right? See that? Yo. Oh, echo. Okay. I thought it was gonna echo some keep up. I was gonna try some shit. Oh no! Nah, I just had to switch out his uh. Man, this one is good. Ing- that was good engineering your behalf. I appreciate it. Hey, Marlon, this yo yo iPad looking sus. We live too. It's recording, so you sus, know. Sus, suspect. Sus, sus, sus. Suspect. You're right in broad daylight. All right, there we go. Looking good. Looking good. Gone. Looking like a young Horace Grant. <laughs> All right, I mean, Horace Which Grant I, was nice. Yeah, that was he was the first run, right? The first three people was Horace Grant with the Bulls. Yep, the next one was Dennis. Yeah, he had a nice run. He did. Hey, yeah, Marvin, this, I just want you to know that we we can't hear you. Mom, he can't. He, he can't hear you at all if it's, it's spinning like that right now. Right, Listen, man, I wanted to break down some things that I felt that are very, very needed to be discussed. Oh, okay. Okay. I find WNBA basketball enjoyable to watch. Now, can you elaborate on that when you when you say I, I find it enjoyable to watch? I appreciate the uh the scheme and the uh strategic plays of basketball. So ideally these women are not athletic as the men. You don't get a lot of high fighting plays. You do get sometimes, but I appreciate just the nuances they play at and the efficiency. They much much better ball handlers and much better shooters than probably the men's game, but they have to be due to the uh the nature of like the beast. a natural yeah that nature to be natural uh, athleticism that men 
and for women, but it's still an enjoyable product to watch. Saw Brianna Stewart tonight. First time I've seen it, she got a she got a clip. I was watching hit all the J's, all levels. All kind of clip. All right, Marlo, what's what's good now? We're, we're, how you how you set up? You you good? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna stick with the phone. The uh iPad has some technical difficulties. Okay. Now we, we all we all know that you have a, a whole computer there that you can <laughs> It's not working. I don't know. You set it up. You must have set it up wrong. Had to be. Had to be. All right. So, gentlemen, Marvin, can you please explain to us uh, the dilemma that was presented to us earlier so we can move with that? The dilemma that I came to you guys with, I, I heard uh, a man discussing cultural Marxism. And his explanation, I, I just... It wasn't clear. It was, it was uh, very wide and this and that. So I started looking up different people, and I came across Doctor uh, Bachman. I, I I watched several of his things, and I thought he went in depth and, and uh, explained it well. So I asked you all to view it, you and Lenny, to see what y'all thought about his comments because he had comments about like you say uh barack obama and how he's against him uh the michael brown case and uh how he thinks that got caught in that whole convoluted thing of you know uh cultural marxism <laughs> right <laughs> and then what was that thing he he kept saying the uh cultural enigma enigma uh, homogeny, homogeny, homogeny. I think, that, I think that's the word. Had either one of you guys ever heard of that before? I understand the concept. Uh, I never heard of putting that frame, but that was you would probably consider the American uh, Milton Pot theory. Well, his his was more uh, specific. It's it's what defines the culture, and he had named it like our current culture is defined by a white male cisgender heterosexual native born it was, i think it was something you know he, he said there's a bunch of checks that you can you can add to mm -hmm. this but that's what he was saying that's a it, it's it's hedge it's something that's the word is close to what i said now i'm feeling like that's not the exact word but we're gonna hear it when he brings it up and you have a you have a guest in here and i don't see no picture so you know we'll wait until the break and, and try to bring, bring these people we don't know we don't know. Yeah, because I'm, you know, I'll be honest with you. You guys sent me a clip, but I probably heard the first eight to ten minutes of it, so I didn't get a chance to get into it. So I'm intrigued to hear this man's take on cultural Marxism. All right, now we're going to take a break around the twenty minute mark, uh, and you know, reflect on what we thought, and then we'll, I'll show a little bit of uh, like def definitions. We refresh and drinks at the twenty minute mark. Definitely, but you know, I'm a host, so I, I can't just say it like that. All right, so okay. y'all ready? Y'all ready to get into this? Yeah. So ready. Is to address the topic of cultural Marxism. And that's a clean beer. Clean it's beer. It's a topic that I have been talking about for a long time. And it's a topic that most people didn't want to hear me talk about. But now, um, for some strange reason, People are finding it uh, about 225, more right, at his age, right? There's a passage of scripture Easy. Uh, that I want to read for us. It's from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 12. First Chronicles, chapter 12. I was trying to think about a passage of scripture, you know, I mean, talking about cultural Marxism. Like, where's that text, you know? Um, and this is not a text on cultural Marxism, but I, I believe it's a text um, that really explains the importance of us addressing this issue. Oh, shoot. First Chronicles chapter I, you, 12, I beginning of verse 23. Never come mind. In. Okay, Make go ahead. A footnote. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go well, ahead, go ahead. It's, so I'm seeing him, and he's presenting himself like he, you know, in an educated manner. But the screen behind him says the founders. Uh -huh. That intrigues me to understand what the founders really is, whoever he's speaking in front of. And I would love to see the audience looks like he's about to speak to about cultural Marxism. Okay, so... um. <clears throat> fair, it's fair. So let's 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 just take a look at the uh the about the about him real quick. Um 
Oh, shoot. Nope. Nope. Don't got it set up right. Uh, we got a we got basically a background of him, and he's uh he deals with an African African centered Christianity. Uh, so he's normally speaking in front, mm-hmm. in front of a bunch of people who look like me and you, uh, but you don't see that in in this. But I had the same I had the same question, and it was it's the same sort of founders that you think of, but it's associated with more African centered. Is that is that cool? Yeah, I'll take okay. that. All right, all right. These are the numbers of the divisions of the armed troops who came to David in Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul over to him according to the word of the Lord. So David, the man after God's own heart, is uh, is about to inherit the kingdom. He's about to become king, and there are men who came with him, because if you're going to be king, if you're going to govern God's people, if you're going to lead God's people, um, there's some things that you need. Amen? The men of Judah, bearing shield and spear, were 6,800 armed troops. The Simeonites, mighty men of valor for war, 7,100. Of the Levites, 4,600. Prince Jehoiada of the house of Aaron, and with him 3,700. Zadok, a young man, mighty in valor, and 22 commanders from his own father's house. Of the Benjaminites, the kinsmen of Saul, 3,000, of whom the majority to that point kept their allegiance to the house of Saul. Of the Ephraimites, 20,800 mighty men of valor, famous men in their father's house of the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000, who were expressly named to come and make David king of Issachar. Men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. 200 chiefs and all their kinsmen under their command. Swords, shields, Mighty men of valor. You need all that. Amen? Amen. You also need some men who understand the times so that you know what you ought to do. And that's what I hope this session will be about. I hope that it will be about us trying to understand the times. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to just offer you a dry lecture on the topic of cultural Marxism, which is kind of hard not to do, because it is cultural Marxism. (laughs) But what I want to do is sort of put this in a context to help you understand why it's important, why this matters. Uh, Currently, in this discussion in this debate, and I even hesitate to call it a debate, and I'll talk more about that as the weekend goes on. One of the reasons it's not really a debate is because there's a lot of name calling, right? Uh, People address the issue of social justice, some topic comes up, one person says it's a social justice issue, the other person calls them a cultural Marxist, and then they turn around and call the person a racist, and that's that's about all the debate that you get. It's, it's, it's name calling and things get short circuited because of the name calling. And often neither side is being completely honest. And we know it. Often the person who's looking at their brother and saying, ah, you're just a cultural Marxist, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that that's what the person is, even though they may believe that They're espousing some of the ideas that come from cultural Marxism. And generally, the person who turns back and says, are you just a racist, um, knows better. But both sides recognize that that's a way to shut the other down. Correct. Because right now, these are not issues that are being debated. These are not issues that are being discussed. And, And in fact, in many instances, the mere act of debating and discussing these issues is considered to make you 
a cultural Marxist or a racist. On one hand, if the one person says that this was an injustice and you turn it's around and want to powers. debate and whether or not that was an injustice, and look at you, how, how dare you? I just told you that this was an injustice. How insensitive can you be to not acknowledge this injustice? <laughs> And on the other hand, the other person who do, who genuinely doesn't believe that an injustice has occurred is trying to point out why an injustice hasn't necessarily occurred here and have a finger pointed at them and are called a racist. And they say, wait a minute, really? How long have we known each other? You know that's not who I am. And so we end up just sort of not addressing the issues not debating the issues. That's the great irony here, is that there are issues that need to be dealt with, that we, that we need to press in on, that we need to press each other on. But this has been declared ground where we're not allowed to fight because merely deciding to debate and argue these issues disqualifies you and for some people it even disqualifies you as a christian mm. you're no longer a brother or a sister if you're not right on these issues another part of the problem is our ignorance of or misuse of the terms which is one of the reasons that i want to address this tonight but first let me tell you what i'm not saying I'm not here to state that all who disagree with me are, are, are Gramscian cultural neo-Marxists. Such big You'll words. understand those terms as we go along. Right? Such big words. That, that's, that's, that's not what I'm here to say. I, I don't believe that. I believe that there are some people within these circles, there are some people within these movements who absolutely hold to this ideology that we're going to talk about here tonight. But there are others who don't hold to the ideology who unfortunately have decided to use the terminology. And that's a problem. I'm also not here to state that all of the ideas with which I disagree in the current debate are Marxist. He took us we never want to talk about. Not fair. As come well. on, come on. Get that man, get that man some time, man. I, I am not a social justice warrior. I am not an advocate of intersectionality. I, I'm not even an advocate of systemic racism theory, and it is a theory. I'm, I'm not an advocate of those things. But I don't believe that everyone who is an advocate of those things is necessarily a Marxist. And I think we have to be careful about that. That we're dealing with brothers and sisters here. And, and, and again, while I would actually love and enjoy um, to be treated with that level of brotherly love and respect, uh, I can't demand it. I, 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 I won't demand it, but I have to give it. Amen? Uh, we, I have to give it. And so that, that's, that's my decision here. My decision here is to give that and, and hope for it in return. Hope that people are honest enough um, to deal in kind. So what am I saying? What is my goal here? Um, my goal is to lay out a sketch of, of cultural Marxism. Um, we won't be able to go into every aspect of this ideology, but I, I, I want you to at least have an idea of where it comes from and what we're talking about when you use the you term. You just get right to it. My hope is to make it clear why and how I and others use the term and what we mean by it. Because I do use the term, and I have used the term for a while, and I believe it's appropriate to use the term. Although it's unfortunate because when, when people hear it, that, that sense of offense comes, so we have to be careful. Who does this word offend? In doing so, I hope to help you understand a couple of things. Why this terminology is important. Ideas matter. Words matter. 
And, and it's important that we understand the words that we use. And it's important on both sides. It's important for you, whichever side of this thing you find yourself on, to understand the words that you use and the implications of the words that you use and not just assume that people know what you're talking about or what you mean when you throw out those words. Secondly, I want you to understand why I believe it's important to address these issues. And you've heard some of that already today. But I do believe that this is a critical issue and we are at a critical juncture. There are things at stake here that are of the utmost priority and significance. I also want you to understand why certain ideas are being embraced today or why some of these ideas are actually antithetical to the gospel that we love and preach and why these issues that we face are important enough to discuss and find a way forward because we knew we do need to find a way forward. Sticking our head in the sand is not an option. And not only is it not an option because, you know, we find ourselves at this crossroad within evangelicalism, that that's important. It's important oh. that we battle these things hey. out. It's important that we understand each other. It's important that we have you clarity. Didn't that. It's important that we find ourselves on the same page. But there are a couple of other things that are important that I, I, I want you to hear tonight. Because remember what I said about the courtesy that I want to extend that courtesy that is not always extended in the other direction. Racism is real. And it's sin. And I think it's sad that there are people who are actually arguing that those of us who have been part of the statement on social justice and the gospel have somehow made a statement that we don't believe that racism is real or that racism is a sin. Racism is real. It's a sin. Oppression is real. It's sinful. Hatred is real, and it's sinful. My aim here is not to merely fight battles of terminology in order to avoid acknowledging real issues like these. These are real issues. And enough already with the people who are saying, well, you, 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 you just use terminology like cultural Marxism. You just use these words like this so that you don't have to address these real issues. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. There are too many people who've been killed by police officers. Guess what? There's too many police officers who've been killed by citizens. That's a problem. We have serious problems in immigration that demand not only political solutions, but also present an opportunity for those of us who love the gospel and want the gospel to be preached to every nation. Amen, somebody. There are far too many educational opportunities, too many educational resources in this country for so many people to have so poor an education. That's an issue. It's real. Amen? So simply because... I am going to argue and will not stop arguing against cultural Marxism does not mean that I am unwilling to acknowledge or to engage on these real issues. And it is insulting, unfair, and unbrotherly to suggest otherwise. Just as much as it is to say that anybody who emphasizes these issues more than I would somehow doesn't love the gospel. My background. I just want to help you understand 
why this is something that I've been addressing. Um, I was raised in South Central Los Angeles, now just South LA. I don't know why they changed all that, but by a single teenage Buddhist mother. Buddhist, man. And so, yes, I was a fatherless young black man growing up in the ghetto in South LA, drug infested, gang infested South LA. The police who policed my neighborhood were from the famous or infamous, depending on who you're asking, Rampart Division. You don't even have to be from Los Angeles to have heard about the Rampart Division. The Rampart Division was the baddest gang in L.A. They made sure we knew that. There are a number of family members of mine who have spent most of their adult life in prison. There are two first cousins of mine who've been gunned down in the street. So, I, again, I also think it's rather ironic that, you know, when people listen to me talking about these issues, there are some people who have suggested <laughs> that my position on these issues somehow rises out of the fact that I'm not in touch with blackness or the black experience, or I've been so privileged that somehow I just don't get it. <laughs> it's especially ironic when some of these people have seen virtually nothing in the way of real oppression who have the audacity to say such things. So, so that's where I come from. I come from a family of activists. I, I come from, I remember, I, I mean, I just... Hey, you know, black power, black nationalism, hey, pause it. members of my family who are part yeah. of the Nation of Islam, members of my... Yeah. When is he going to start talking about cultural Marxism? Oh, this is it's part of it. I just want to know, between me and everybody else, I just want to hear about cultural Marxism. All right, but again, we're playing this so that we can get to understand what cultural Marxism is. Like, this is... That's the title of his lecture. How much time we in? Uh, right. I hey, uh, Lenny, he's about to start because uh, he's about to go in on uh, Obama right now. Yes, remember okay, I, I, okay. we did the pregame. I said at the night at about nineteen thirty. I'm a pause, and then you know we gonna we gonna say we what you got to say. That. I just had a question because I was just saying I had nothing about cultural Marxism from all this conversation so far. So I was wondering if we were going to get to it. That's right. all. Yeah. Okay. Well, some of the things that he's explaining. Where you have uh, where you're having these arguments amongst people, he he's he's giving you examples of what cultural Marxism is. Like it's it's what you're doing. No, I understand his standpoint because he's an an evangelical black man. I already know what it is, so I understand that. I just want him to get to the uh, dissertation on cultural Marxism, more or less. And I was it's, it's funny. It's, a, it's it's a bit. I was just trying to write all up, and I just wanted to see. If we gonna keep talking about anything, anything else but cultural Marxism. Yep, we gonna keep talking about everything but cultural Marxism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my family, who were parts of other organizations, members of my family who were part of protests and the whole civil rights movement and everything else—that's where I come from. He's setting it up, Lenny. He I didn't is. Up he needs your black resume, nigga. I'm black. I know what father, being black is about. Damn. Was always it leads me to believe the people he talking he to worked in the not criminal black. justice system. You gotta prove your blackness in speech. All right, all right, but it's we gonna get to that good he stuff, as man. A counselor in juvenile detention centers. He worked in a boys' home. My mother was a victim's advocate until she retired in San Antonio, Texas, working in the legal system there. My first three jobs were in group homes because of the influence of those people who raised me. So again, this is where I'm coming from on these issues. And yet, I despise cultural Marxism. I'm not a social justice warrior. Reject ideas like white privilege, intersectionality, and systemic racism theory. 
absolutely unequivocally so. And not just since yesterday. I started writing about cultural Marxism in the mid, well, in the early 2000s, somewhere around 2005, 6, and 7. Blogged about it intently, uh, intensely in 2007 during the election. And Lenny wanted him uh, to hurry up. Because <laughs> he been doing of this what year. I saw. He's been doing this for 20 years. Lenny, like, hey, man, speak this up, man. Of Barack Obama, who was a this massive is. cultural Marxist. And in my opinion, then and now, a dangerous man. Now, that's where I was going to pause, man. Like, I was going to... Because what you said is the truth, but he he's doing it. He he's doing what he's supposed to do. Like this. Well, this I, is, first of all, he's he. I as the man I am, I don't turn down no ideas. Okay, so I'm willing to hear an idea out. I may not agree with. It, I might adapt to it, but I never tell nobody like, "Hey, your idea is stupid." Or I don't agree. You know, I just don't be demonstrative in that way. So just just the way it coming off is it, it just uh, evangelicalism is cautious to me. So when you tell me I'm a joke of Christian, you already put me on my heels. Like, hold up, what's going on with you? You know what I'm saying? Because it's very a cautious thing. Uh, it's not really uh, an ethnic group thing. It's kind of once you in, you in. And it's just a, a congealing of everybody. But I don't, um, a lot of things they align with, I don't agree with. Because okay. I, I just don't feel like whatever your religious beef is, you shouldn't try to push that on somebody through institutional governmental means. Okay, okay. And that's your take on just even evangelicalism no, that's the truth okay all right, all right. like paul is, pierce is that is that your point on on any religion if he would have mentioned he was part of any religion in that no not any religion Eve, evangelical <laughs> how you say it so okay. i pronounce it that's for that specific cult oh okay oh, all right all right cool. it ain't about that so I, I i understand what you're saying okay and that's why you want him to speed it up because you was hearing something that you like i don't well I, um, well, I was wondering when we was going to talk about cultural Marxism. That's all I was wondering. I haven't heard. I have a, a rudimentary understanding of what cultural Marxism is defined as. He's not talked about it yet. Well, he just played the spade. He, all right, because this this conversation is a Boston. This is all. So you tell he, me he led, he got an O. He led with spades. He led with spades. And that's it, how yeah, serious. Okay. That's how serious he is saying the biggest one that he know of is Obama. He like put his cars down and said, you be it. Yes. And so that's, I could I could have went to 19, but it's good to hear him tell a little bit about himself as well as uh, an overarching problem. So, I could, yeah, I could have jumped right to this <laughs> Obama see, part. I understand, but see, for me, I never got the understanding what he felt the overarching problem is. I understand he's told about himself and he kind of defines himself as a black man. But from that, I never got understanding of what the problem he was supposed to be talking to well i would i would always i would always like to be afforded that um and he sort of stated it himself where he said you know i make sure that i give everybody their just due respect even though i would like it back from you uh i demanded of myself to give you all the respect that you you deserve um and and he's building up he's trying to just build some equity into you that he's a he's a legit person uh yeah, so that's, that leads me to believe he's talking to a crowd that's not amongst his ethnic group. Because okay. the man, the black man, look like that. Me and you see that black man, we already know. This brother knows something. Go ahead and tell what you got to say. But it's All like right. he is building up his case with a crowd that's not well, uh, like minded in a way. I, I, didn't, okay. I didn't take it that way. Like everybody's going to receive it their way. What right. I mm -hmm. took, what I took him as doing, uh, because as he goes on in his speech, he reaches back to all those examples that he gave to say, this is why I believe this. This is why. The so everything that he didn't set up in the first part of it is like a uh, like in music, a crescendo. He's Correct. building up to what he's going to say. And then you can look back and say, hey, he done it. Now, so, unfortunately, I it. unfortunately, Lenny is the only one who hasn't watched all of it in his entirety already. So he kind of, you know. Yeah, that's a dry run. That's a dry run. Yeah. It's first impressions of the speech. I'm just giving my critique. We got you, and it's all it's all good. So we about to so we about to jump in it. All right, we jumping in. Yes, it. sir. On a number of fronts and for a number of reasons. And so, 
yeah, I ended up, you know, some of you may have seen um, an interview that I did um, on CNN um, mm -hmm, not me. before the election, um, talking about, you know, some of these issues. I only got to do that one time. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that was pretty much it. The lady, the lady said after the, after the interview was over, that, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll have to have you back. Um, and I knew at that moment that I would never be back on that person's show again. Um, and so this is not something new. Why did I think it was an issue at that time? Uh, because of a number of things. Let me give you just a few that I wrote about then and was worried about then because of the philosophy of cultural Marxism and because of this man's long history with cultural Marxism. Um, not only from his university days, but even his church. He, he, this man sat under an overt Marxist pastor for decades. Jeremiah Wright. Jeremiah Wright. Right. Right. He was, right. Right. He was, he was not just a cultural Sorry, Marxist, you know? he was also a classical Marxist. Okay? This man had sat under that teaching for years and years. Not only had he done that, but his position on certain issues, like, for example, his homosexual agenda, the most radically pro-homosexual politician that radically I've pro seen or experienced in the mainstream. Listen, so evangelicals hated him for that. I understand it. It goes against the root cause. On judicial activism, hate crimes legislation, and I believed and said openly on a number of occasions that I believed this man's presidency would make race relations in America worse. I've been not throwing better. bricks at that boy since 19. An article that I wrote Listen, and actually this is a handsome Uncle Ruckus. two years later. Because like I'm Uncle not big Ruckus on, was I handsome. told you so, but I told you so. You called it. And so, yes, this is, I don't, don't think that I've come here this weekend Marcus suddenly King talking bad. about cultural Marcus Marxism because, you know, now it's a trump card that can be used in this particular debate. Do the word trump out, catchphrase. Nearly a decade and a half now I've been addressing this issue. So with that in mind, let's look at it. A couple of things. First, cultural Marxism and, and, and classical Marcus, Marxism are two different things. And this is one of the things that makes the discussion difficult. Classical Marxism, Karl Marx was an economist, right? I mean, he, classical Marxism is an economic system. You, you know, we know about the, the bourgeois and the proletariat. We know uh, from each according to his ability to each according to his need. We, we know about the, the, the uprising of the masses, we, you know, to, to, to overthrow capitalism. We know that Marx was a communist who wanted to see capitalism overthrown. He saw capitalism as oppressing the masses. He also saw religion as the opiate of the masses that allowed them to be oppressed by capitalism. So he was rabidly atheistic. And this is one of the things that makes it difficult to talk to people about cultural Marxism, right? Because classical Marxism is something that for most Christians, for most evangelicals, for real Christians, for real evangelicals who are not way out there in the fringe somewhere, just wouldn't identify with Marxism. And if we don't understand the difference between classical Marxism, this economic system, and cultural Marxism, which is very different than this and its, and its approach, then if you just hear the word, it's like, I, well, how can you say that? How can you suggest that? Three main ideas. Let me give you this just to understand Marx, a summary of his salient points. Number one, he believed that history had really three stages or epochs. Number one, the ancient stage, secondly, the feudal stage, and thirdly, the capitalist stage. He believed that he was witnessing the rise and would see eventually the fall of the capitalist stage. The second idea was the idea of class consciousness, that each one of these societal epochs contained internal contradictions 
And these internal contradictions is what would lead to struggle and would eventually lead to the next phase, which led to the third idea, his idea of historical determinism, that ultimately capitalism would fall. Capitalism had to fall. Why? Because the way he viewed history was history was a view of struggle, was, was, a, was a series of struggles, a series of conflicts. He was a disciple of Hegel. So this was sort of his dialectic, if you will. Thesis, antithesis, synthesis, right? So capitalism had to fall. Workers of the world would unite and there would be a revolution. And there was, right? But not everywhere. And so toward the end of his life, and then during the life of his followers, they tried to explain and understand why it is that capitalism didn't fall. I mean, if capitalism is exploitation of the masses, and, and if history is all about these conflicts, and if this conflict is going to come, and if the next thing that is going to come is a post-capitalist society, then why haven't we seen this? Enter the cultural Marxists with a couple of goals. Number one, to explain why the revolution didn't occur as Marx thought it would. Marx died in 1888, by the way. So now we get into the late 1800s, the early 1900s. We get into World War I. And there are a couple of players that you need to know if you're going to understand cultural Marxism. One is a guy by the name of Antonio Gramsci. Gramsci was an Italian Marxist. Another one is not an individual, but a group of individuals known as the Frankfurt School. Two ideas. One, Gramsci's idea of cultural hegemony. Listen to the way one sociologist puts it. Oh, thank you. Cultural hegemony refers to domination or rule Not maintained that. through ideological or cultural means. It is usually achieved through social institutions which allow those in power to strongly influence the values, norms, ideas, expectations, worldview, and behavior of the rest of society. Cultural hegemony. He got some dramatic That's pauses. The Damn. power. By the way, this idea Love. of cultural hegemony explains something. Have you ever wondered why women who make up more than 50% of the population are considered a minority? You ever wondered why? Because women are not seen as part of the cultural hegemony. The cultural hegemony is patriarchal. The cultural hegemony, for example, in our society is white, male, heterosexual, cisgendered, able-bodied, able -bodied. native born Americans. Yeah, able bodied. I ain't think about that. They they don't like people with disabilities. <laughs> yeah, he just handicapped people got to go apparently. Got to go. You know got to are. go. Sparta. And everybody who's not that is a minority. And everybody who's not that is a victim of the cultural hegemony established by those individuals. Which means that everybody who's not that is at war with that. He's never really defined everybody cultural who is that the ones. Is not once. Can't stand you, man. And the more of those boxes you tick off, the more privileged you are. Shame. Listen to this. Gramsci developed the concept of cultural hegemony in an effort to explain why the worker-led revolution that Marx predicted 
in the previous century had not come to pass. Central to Marx's theory of capitalism was the belief that the destruction of this economic system was built into the system itself since what capitalism is to the is indoctrination from the of exploitation of the working that. class by the ruling class. Why didn't it happen? Well, because we're not dealing with economics. We're dealing with culture. Marx missed this part. Or so Gramsci would argue. He, mixed, he missed this part. So the revolution that comes hey, doesn't need talk? to be a, an armed revolution or an... So, Lenny, uh, what, what was your statement? I think that was very... Well, I was saying the... the what he's explaining was uh, an theory, an idea, but the uh, indoctrination that we found through migration in the American scheme of system superseded that. Uh, where you had uh, different ethnic groups come in and blend in as culturally white in America, that strength of that superseded any type of cultural congeniality. Speaking of that, would have caused cultural Marxism. They defeated that with the system. Co correct, and he's. He's giving light to it, and he's he's telling you what they did to reboot the matrix, basically. Yeah, I just think he's on the wrong side of the conversation, but I understand what he's saying. What was what are the sides to this conversation? Please enlighten me. He's I, from what I'm taking so far, it feels like he's saying basically capitalism defeated Marxism in a way because it's still here. But what I'm just is the the poisonness of capitalism has uh, kept any idea for uprising at bay. Just from the nature of the beast, so I just, I just think he's just gonna, he's back in the wrong side of it. I guess in the way I can say, and from what I've heard. What I want to add to that is he is not talking about that. What he is trying to explain to us is what cultural Marxism is, and he's giving you a large layout uh, because what it is is sort of a continuation of what. Marxism is and mm -hmm. a Marxist believes that this is how you topple capitalism now yes all the all the things that come with capitalism are, are true like you said but he's only trying to give us the context to give a better definition for it like I don't think he's on any side <laughs> any side okay of it. yeah that's okay. your interpretation I'm fine with your right. interpretation okay all right all right we, who, who Marlo you paused it right no, yeah, because I want. I thought what Lenny had brought up was a uh, was an important statement. That, uh, so. Now I'm going to have to listen harder, Lenny, because you you going real hard at it, and we ain't even got to the end. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I just I I'm don't have, like I'm the whole set up the approach, the background. All this <laughs> is janky to me. It's all janky. I setup. feel like he's talking to a room full of white people trying to at ease them at their whiteness. All right. Like, okay. I just want somebody to turn the camera around so I can see the audience and it would make me feel better. But what's what would be wrong with that? Hey, listen, nothing wrong with simping if you're getting paid for it. Nothing oh. wrong for it. Is that what it, wrong with try, is that what it is when you're trying to, to ease something? White white tension? Yeah, you simp. As a black man, you simping. But as an evangelical, is you simping? When, when everybody you're Oh, running. you in the cold. Everybody, it's even, like you, it's everybody cult, your brother. Yeah. Everybody your brother. Yeah, it's a cult. Listen, man. Listen, it is. Have you ever really just studied evangelicalism? That's big. That's Texas. That's big. Where you from? Have you studied it? The nature uh, of it. I'm. I'm a no. I'm. A, I'm a. I'm it's going a to great say field no, trip. Just I've to done it. More. I've done it. I don't even want to say it. you just a field trip taking yourself. It's okay. plenty of documentaries, news pieces on this on this religious group and sex. So do you your own. Do your own. You know everybody in our family. Is either Baptist or evangelical. Like it's no way to avoid that, right? Any, in my any, family, and our yeah, from grandparents and older, right? Like that's yeah, just, I don't that's have just, no. I don't have anybody I know of my family as close to me as evangelical Christian. What about you, Marv? What's that? Evangelical Christian. What what does what does that mean? Oh, hey, there we it's go. A, it's a sect. It's a sect of Christianity, um, and it's a nutshell for me. You know, uh, religion is religion. Your beliefs are your beliefs and how you live your life. But I think it's a crossroad when you want to impose your religious views by law on other people. That's something different. And that's why I define them as they're trying to take their religious views within their own sect of Christianity and expose that to other people through federal laws and things of that nature. 
where the law is dictated to their religious belief, which so, I don't think is fair in America. That's that's interesting. I, I just saw a, a case uh, where a lady wanted to uh, uh, divorce her uh, Muslim husband. You see where uh, uh, Biden, as, uh, in Texas, her husband's uh, Muslim lawyer argued that she had signed a prenup and that uh, the uh, three imams of this uh, Muslim society should mm -hmm. want to handle it and they should handle it under Sharia law. So when you go into religions and the, and the law and this and that, I think that's across the board because if you're, if you're in... Uh, the Middle East, when I was in Saudi, when I was in Kuwait, and all that, you know, Sharia law or that imams, whoever, uh, Alatollah. That, Ayatollah. Yeah. I'm that, with you, though. Every person will supersede uh, whatever little president they have in there. So, wherever you at in your land, uh, this country was found on. In God we trust. So that will be baked into their laws. Yeah. So, well, I believe I believe we had church for you know it's been uh kind of congealed in the last 20 years or so, but church separation separation of church and state. And when you speak of the Muslim situation, that's a technicality in a law, whatever state they're in, it's gonna be worked out. But the Muslim population in America does not have political strength. The event <laughs> even the Christian association, whatever you want to call them, they have political strength. Where they're influencing laws and how people govern, and it's many of our Congress people, and senators who are profess evangelical Christians who operate from a base of it's what's good for this flock. It's how I operate as a U.S. But government official. My point was, Lenny, this Texas federal judge bowed to the imam and this Sharia law to handle this woman's divorce. She's like, but I'm an American citizen. They're like, and that judge was like, well, you fall under this law, so you have to go over here under Sharia law and you don't have all because the did she take did she did, did she sign paperwork like a prenup that might have had uh you know wording in there that alluded to her being you know a subject to Sharia law under her marriage? And that if, if it's paperwork the judge can't go against that they sign that legal paperwork that was, you know, binding. Paperwork. That's something different. It's just a her, judge her, saying she, Sharia law supersede no, my law. The argument is, though, they didn't tell her that's what she was signing. Because uh, she was saying in a Muslim marriage, you have to sign, like, these two pieces of paper. Hey, she, man, stupid people do stupid things. I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. That goes to you. Like, you know, you got, you got, you just, but you this, like, listen, you can have any societal paperwork. You are in America, somebody. and... Uh, Sharia law can dictate a person's uh, uh, marriage. So whether you are evangelical, Southern Baptist, whatever your beliefs are, because you can go to a Mormon compound and they can say, hey, we're a sovereign state. This is going to govern us. You so white people, though. That's white. I'm white people. It's yeah. different. No. It's different. This is different. We went from evangelical Christians, which is a mixed population, all right. All right. to you're black gonna... Muslims to some Mormons. You're not gonna win this one. <laughs> no, I ain't trying to win. It's, it's all about debate. I don't even try to win the base. What I'm saying is, I've researched evangelical Christians, and I don't like how I smell. Oh, okay. What smells good? Uh, man, brew, old spice. <laughs> all right, brother. So. Who made us pause this? Marlo? No, no homo. Because <laughs> it's three of us. Oh, I didn't shout out. Uh, Heru Her sends us a, a message. It says, a debate or a lecture from this perspective is persuasive in nature. Evangelicals use apologetics, which was an attempt to convince someone of your belief and defend the gospel. That's what I was trying to say. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, Adam. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he got the camera. I'm about to bring him on real. Hold on, man. This little picture was up there. Yeah, yeah. What's going on with you, brother? Hey, how y'all brothers doing? Man, what's real, going on? Man? Real good, man. Thanks oh, for man, All right. So uh if if you do you have more 
of this inv- evangelical uh, background that you can shed some light on? Because my my brother tells me, and I'm going with him. If, if he tell me some some don't smell right, I'm gonna say some don't smell right too. Yeah, I, I grew up in an evangelical household and and walked away from that system of belief. And um, the entire uh, premise is really um, about, like I said in the in the in the chat. About apologetics, my the goal as a, of an evangelical is to go out and to convince people to believe the way they believe, to gather followers, to spread the gospel, right, to convert you, uh, to proselytize and things of that nature. So when someone is at a pulpit, um, a podium of that position, um, he's using words like um, the people that don't believe the way that he believes. He's using words like their theory, which was never proven. It's not so. It's not so. He's, he's he's debasing them, right? He's putting them down. He's acting like his knowledge is empirical. But if you listen to what he's saying, he's still using words like believe. And every time I say a word, if I, if I say I believe something, I'm really saying I don't know. It's not been proven, right? It's not a fact. It's not knowledge. It's not empirical. So he's, right. trying, to, he's trying to really convince people of his belief that hasn't been proven as well. So it's interesting, you know, to talk about that, you know, but he's, he's not really, um, he, 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 I would agree with, what, what's your name, Brother Len, Lenny? I would agree yes, with what sir. he was saying. Um, about that. He's trying to convince people of his beliefs. He's coming from that evangelical uh, perspective, which is really patriarchal in nature as well. And so we have to we have to look deeper than that and go back to, you know, a, a way to decide what's true and, 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 and really define the language that we're using. He hasn't even gotten into the definition of the, the words that he's using. He's he's just using per, persuasive language and talking in a, in a um, you know, intelligent manner to try to convince people to, to be okay with the Uncle Ruck, Ruckus move. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. Now we haven't, we haven't, cause, cause the way you explain it is correct. Yo, hold on, we, stop, stop, stop. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate your insight, your intellect. Y'all was bagging on me. Y'all was killing me. Hold on, was hold, hold, me. The reason is you haven't watched the damn film because but he listen, is, So it's funny to me and Marv. We like, yeah, cool. When I smell coon. I smell coon. Hey, I, that's all I know. Listen, I'm just saying that he may be trying to say the same thing. Like he made. No, but I just when he gave me some key words when we was going through, and I was evangelical. I understood it. And he put it in a great format, but it's especially as a black man evangelical, it's almost like apologizing, apologizing to the that community for the fact that you black for acceptance. All right, this is something that does sit well with me as a prideful black man. Got you, got you. Now we have to understand that he's just telling you yeah, what his so. background is. That's, you know, he's he's not a. He's not a pastor or a preacher I, right now. I heard I came here to hear about cultural Marxism. Well, he didn't care what his wait, background wait. is. Wait, wait, wait. Cultural Marxism. Yes. He, he actually he's coming from that that perspective of of a left. He's also. Uh oh, it broke up. We didn't we didn't hear you, pimp. I thought it was just me. I got nervous. Yeah. Hey, we didn't hear you, pimp. You might have to double back on that. Yeah, uh, yeah Haru, we, can wait. We, we can't hear you, man. They didn't got to you, man. Abort, abort. <laughs> they in, they swooping in. Uh, <laughs> hey, the, 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 frog the, police, the police coming. Put it in your butt. What, you, what did they nah, say? Put, hide it behind your head. The police is coming. Yeah, hide it behind your head. Yeah. Police coming. Yeah, yeah everybody. So hear you now. Everybody. Okay, going? yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. brother, I mean, I don't know what the brother's point is ultimately, right? Because I haven't seen all all the lecture. But okay. at, up front, he's using words like "amen," right? He's he's bringing out the Bible. He's talking from a pastoral perspective. You know Correct. what I mean? So we can't yes, we can't separate the, separate both of those and say, okay, what, on one side he's a scholar, on the other side he's not a pastor. He's a scholar and a pastor in this conversation, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. that that would be true. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. So he's like he's like Paul coming through. I just want to make sure I was understanding. Go ahead. All I'm right. gonna go back on mute. Though. I'm gonna be quiet. Hey, my, oh. my bail money, man. They coming to get you, Haru. They coming to get you, man. <laughs> man which is, which is hey, why I stay off microphones and cameras. I'm checking my drum. <laughs> I'm checking my drum. Hey, I, I get, call, call me. All right, we're going to go back to let this play, y'all. And a revolution of force, it needs to be a hegemonic revolution. In other words, we need to change the cultural hegemony. We need to overturn the cultural hegemony. And how do you overturn the cultural hegemony? A couple of things. For Gramsci? His past game is on point. Control the robes so of point. society. What are the robes of society? You know the people who wear robes. Judges. Professors. pastors 
he let that word hang, don't he? Politician. Leverage those positions. How many did he say originally? Four. In order to educate and mobilize the masses against the hegemonic power. Use the educational system, the political system, the judicial system, in order to overturn the cultural hegemony. I hear him say that. He say that. I hear him talk so familiar. It's the same he thing. Said, this yeah. is how you gain power. By the way, in the meantime, how do you lying. gain political power? You gain political power by promising various groups of people that you will advocate for them. That's how you do it. Sometimes I feel like the video is freezing. That's why you can have so many white, male, heterosexual, cisgendered, (laughs) able-bodied, native-born American politicians who present themselves as representatives of the people who are not any of those things. That's how cultural Marxism works. He's stoic. Well, there's another group of individuals. The Frankfurt School. (laughs) Let me give you this quickly. The Frankfurt School refers to a collection of scholars. Collection of scholars in Frankfurt, Germany. These individuals who were known for developing critical theory and popularizing the dialectic method of learning by interrogating society's contradictions, and it's most closely associated with the work of a number of German philosophers during the early 20th century. They saw a couple of things that for them explained why the revolution didn't happen. And for them, part of it was the fact that people were receiving so much information through mass media. Remember, this is the early 20th century. Radio, you know, just coming around. TV, not so much. So people weren't necessarily associating and interacting with each other like they had been in the past, but were receiving information through things like newspapers and radios and so on and so forth. So one of the main goals of the Frankfurt School was to leverage these tools in order to bring about the change in the hegemonic powers. Reduce everything to discussions of race, class, gender, sex. And notice I use both of those because sex and gender are two different things. Right? Sex has to do with your biology, gender, social construct. Your gender doesn't necessarily have to match your sex. <laughs> do we, are we aware of this? And if your gender doesn't match your I'm sex, not, then you okay. are transgender as opposed to cisgendered. For those of you who are wondering what that would say. Because I, f- I feel like if, if <laughs> this was 1998. Did you pause it? Hold on. Did you pause it? Yeah, because if, if this was 1998, man, I'd be confused. But now it makes sense that he has to define it like that. That's all. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. Hey, I'm trying to look up homogeneity. Cisgender just <laughs> means that you're not special. No, hegemony. I found it. Hegemonics. The Frankfurt School was concerned with mass media and the mass media culture saw people becoming passive recipients of political and ideological information instead of being activists. And they believed that this explained why the revolution didn't take place. They theorized that this experience made people intellectually inactive and politically passive as they allowed mass-produced ideologies and values to wash over them and to infiltrate their consciousness. Because of what happened in World War I, 
they left Germany. And in 1933, they went to Switzerland, but they only stayed there for a couple of years. And in 1935, they came to New York and became affiliated with Columbia University. Such a great There's boss. a man by the name of Blink Vazonia. I don't know if I his name correctly. Um, he gave me like 10 seconds of better for like. Came to the United States fleeing the Nazis in Eastern Europe, fleeing the Nazis in Hungary. And he wrote a book called America's 30 Years War. And essentially his thesis was this he ran away from what was happening in Europe by force, only to come to the United States and watch it happen gradually over the course of a generation. One generation. But what is he talking about? Man, we, that's what we getting. Come on, man. Okay, I'm keep talking about something, but I don't know what he's talking about. You and Her- Heru, you know y'all gangsters on. <laughs> so so what do these about? guys give us? A number of things, namely, could be have a punchline. So I critical know. theory. Have you heard the idea of critical race theory? Mm-hmm. It's a grandchild of the Frankfurt School. Mm. Political correctness, multiculturalism, any of these things sound familiar? Is multiculturalism bad? Yes. So as a result of these ideologies, it's bigger than about too much. We have all been taught over time through our media, through our educational systems, to view ourselves not as part of a whole, but as part of subgroups. As part of subgroups who in some way, shape, fashion, or form are being oppressed. By the hegemonic power that rules and governs our culture. He liked that word. It's a great word. That's why you looked it up. I had no idea what it was. I still don't. <laughs> Just like you know what critical <laughs> this is. And so even when we talk about elections, we don't talk about this person is ahead in the polls by this much. That person is it. No. This person is ahead with red-headed, left-handed <laughs> white people from the South, while this person is getting the vote of second-generation migrant workers with eczema. That's what it be sounding like when the news be talking about the, Sorry, with the, poll, the exit polls. It don't sound that at all. Why do we talk like that's that? That's like a, a skit on Dave Spill, so that's what it's like. Why do we think about politics that way? Why do we think about each other that way? Why do ideas like intersectionality from Kimberly he Crenshaw like a Fox News show <laughs> gain such popularity like that people him, that, use that whole it block. Like like we know what it is. By the way, if you don't know what intersectionality is, just what's the hegemonic power? White, male, heterosexual, never defined it. cisgendered, okay. able-bodied, native-born American people. At least that's the man. You gotta at least be that, <laughs> right? You're Who's the man, you know, the man keeping us down. That's the man. That's the man, Lenny. That's the man, Lenny. And by the way, the list could go on and on and on. Intersectionality, (laughs) in a nutshell. He might be CIA. Basically, is the idea that to the degree that you don't have those things, you are oppressed. And so if you are male, heterosexual, cisgendered, Right, native born American, able bodied, um, by the way, also attractive. There's pretty privilege too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> if you are all those things, just but let you're know. not white, right, then you, your oppression is limited to this area. But what if you're not white, but you're also not male? 
Now that place where you're not whiteness and you're not maleness intersects is where you feel the weight of the oppression. But what if you're not white and not male and not heterosexual? Well, is now he the trying to confuse us on purpose? You because you have these three <laughs> he his way to confuse us. Lenny, oppression. I had to what watch if you're not white, field. not male, He's not heterosexual, and not cisgender? Right Listen, man. All right. Like, listen, I'm, he just, if you, I, I got you. I got you. I'm about to let you do your thing, man. I got you. I got no, you. No, I don't want to do nothing. I want to hear the rest of it. But it like he went out his way to get me lost in his message. Because that is what he's trying to define that the things we are going through is putting out, putting us out of our way to very simple things. He, he, he he's well, he very good. Say that. Well, you know what? I guess like, I guess you're right, man. <laughs> That's why. Why don't just say that? Give me a five minute video. If he just said that, then he couldn't do the dramatic pauses, Lenny. At yeah, all. If, 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 listen, we need to see like who we can nominate him with because his dramatic effect is impeccable. I've never heard it's any impeccable. better. <laughs> no, I've never heard any better. This is like the theater quality. And I, and I know pastors. I've heard some great pastors preach. I have. But not. they would be at all of this. At all, <laughs> you, ain't, all right, you ain't heard a pastor priest till you uh go to a Southern Baptist church, sir. I've they, been in one. Couple yeah, of them. I'm yeah. talking to her. Yeah, you say you have. I'm, I'm telling yeah. you, boy, they jump up and down. They make sense. Oh man, it's beautiful, man. That's where I'm from. Listen, because you know when you hear that organ kick in, that preacher about to get live. When you hear that, wah, he about to get it going. You know, you about about twenty minutes out the door. About twenty minutes more to go. We out of here. I, I passed a uh, Leonard Jones. He used to hit him with the, ah, and then, you know, grab an ear. Ah, hit him with it was the, basically a James Brown impersonation. He was like, when they put the cape on, like, I'm about to go. No, I ain't. That's yeah, basically yeah. what it is. Spin around, jump up in the air, and come down. That's what, that, hey, the old people used to leave there and be like, he walked the dog today. <laughs> he walked the dog today? Yeah. He walked the dog. Oh, cross that pew pit. <laughs> All right, man. Let's let this man get his get his shine and let Lenny keep talking major trash about him. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. But he was talking about that guy left. Uh, he uh, ran from Nazi Germany, went to Hungary, and uh, the Nazi came, the Nazis came there. So he said when he relocated to America, he saw how uh, that hate and everything with Nazi Germany was real fast. But he saw it implemented when he came to America and he's, you know, and it took, it was gradual and it took 30 years, but he saw the same thing. America saw where the Nazis went wrong, took what worked, threw what other shit away. Say, but what he was talking about, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. It, it was a gradual thing, but he saw it over, a, that's why, why he said one generation, he saw it over a generation and he wrote a thesis on it and got like 12 doctorate degrees because of it. That was the German guy? Oh, I don't know. I just, oh, just he made did. that shit up. Okay. That man ain't say nothing about that in this whole gadget video. No, he did. No, he did. No, he nah, did. He did. He I did. ain't heard nothing of that shit. Yeah, he, th he talked about the German. He talked I'm bullshit, about the German. I'm bullshit. I'm bullshit. I'm bullshit. The Frankfurt, the Frankfurt Academy. Frankfurt. I'm with you. Yeah. Now, he's, he's trying to overlay that idea on top of, let's think of the word as juxtaposed because we're under this we're under this idea that we live in a specific sort of society but it's not really like the matrix <laughs> i'm not under that type of idea at all oh my so, goodness so okay all right cool but i understand what you're saying it's just it's it's it's, it's, <laughs> nah, we good. it's okay lenny we good we good hey hey yeah, we stop it. Stop. No, stop we, we straight it. We straight it. All right. <clears throat> All right, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's hold go on. Hold back. on. Hold on. Hold on. Give me five seconds. Give me five seconds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whole different person. This ain't even the same man no more. Okay. And it dirty. Understand it. All right. Here we go. Ooh. <laughs> Boss. So now you are a <laughs> black exactly. trans. Oh, really? Male. Boss? Lesbian, but anyway, you're this all the same person he's he's, he's labeling. Well, yes. this yes. Now That's there okay. are I'm with it, I'm with it. intersections of oppression, right? 
Well, if you're not white and you're not male and you're not heterosexual and you're not cisgendered and you're not able-bodied. Or you're not a native-born American. Mm. You're an immigrant. Mm. Or you're not a... You see, intersectionality says that the level of oppression and the kind of oppression that you experience Mm -hmm. combines itself in these areas and layers itself in these areas, these intersections, if you will. Intersectionality. But what is that? You never explained it. It's not a grown-up expression of cultural Marxism. Thank you, Lenny. You just, you're the greatest, man. I love it, too. I love it. this whole thing. When I watch it again, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to love it. By the way, when people use the term racism today. He's like he used to play in the NFL. The term racism, yeah, you got to be careful and you got to understand what people are like, talking about. Like a free safety. Because when people so, say both up after his racism, career. they could mean you are being accused of being an individual who has racist, prejudicial ideas toward other individuals. Or they could just be saying that you are a person who is part of the cultural hegemony, which, by the way, is inherently racist against people. That's what we say. Who are not. Both of them. That's what we say. Yeah, I agree with that. You don't like it, but which means that now you have racism without a racist. It's an ideology. It's a theory. Yeah, I just wish you would have watched it because we wouldn't have to do all these pauses. <laughs> you pause on your own. I'm just having fun with it. You just pause. Oh, that's, right. handle that. that's right. Pass the blame. Put the sin on me. Racism in the heart of an Scared individual. Raw, spoil the child. Let's go to the book. Amen. Let's go to the book. Let's call that what it is. But racism that exists because of cultural hegemony. How do you fix that? Man, A plus pause, man. Now, instead of a preacher, you've become a politician. Because the only way to fix that one is to change the hegemony. The hegemony. So we got to move the hegemony, Crystal. Right. You see why these ideas matter? (laughs) And so the very ways in which we think about ourselves, the very ways in which we think about issues, the very ways. And this is why sometimes you can feel like you're having a different conversation than another person. A prime example is the Mike Brown case. I mean, I got absolutely hammered, (laughs) hammered over the Mike Brown case. Tom Haskell got hammered over appreciating what I said about the Mike Brown case. He the president and Jared Longshore, hell of a last name, is the vice president of the founders. And you can feel like you're having two different conversations because on the one hand, they look how they name sound. And you say, okay, a guy six foot four, 300 and some odd pounds reaches into a police car and grabs the gun of a police officer. Anybody who knows anything about anything says if I have a gun and you reach to grab my gun one of us is in trouble but if you run away if from you me get it and you are me. away from if me you and don't I still shoot you hands up don't shoot never happened it was a complete and fabrication I I so a guy I'm scared to go to Missouri as a black man Smooth Harlem moonwalk, shot the original moonwalk. And you may have had I don't trust the narrative, but You're narrative I know going, make it seem okay, janky. Okay, listen. You you tell me the story of 
the police officers who acted inappropriately and we can go together to be against that person. But you tell me this story and I say, there was no injustice here. Where was you at when they locked me up in the mall in 96 for being black? That wasn't racism. <laughs> Where was he at there, Er? Where was, Where was you at, at, black man? Yeah, you holding it down so much. You such Where a was gangster. He, they called us niggas in Liberty Township. You put your fist up so high. Problem is not one police officer and his actions on that one night, <laughs> but a cultural hegemony that has established structural racism that disproportionately targets black males. Holla at them. Therefore, every time something like that happens to one of them, it is another piece of evidence. Which is why you have people who say things like, the, the facts of that case really don't matter. <laughs> The craziest shit I've heard. Hey man, the facts on this one don't He's really matter. He's using like key words he never defined to this whole speech. Like <laughs> key words he never clearly defined. He keeps going to these key words though. Hey man, let it ride. Or worse. That's a great pause. You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you, pause. you, you didn't pause it? Hell no. Say, oh god oh, damn. Now you're man, you the <laughs> This will never get my time. <laughs> nah, I thought you you paused it, right? Oh, no. I think he having case. several strokes on and stage. People say, <laughs> oh, now you're blaming the victim. That's you, man. <laughs> ain't me, man. What's the end result of that? Is it buffering? Dude, the end result of that is... Are you is, listening to what he's saying? It's a dramatic You don't pause. engage. It is, I'd have left. If I was there in person, I'd have walked out and got some water. Listen, some we, my cell phone. You listen, start talking listen, about the facts of that case. Listen. And people say, oh, now you're blaming the victim. Black victim blame, man. This nigga Marlo is making What's it happen over there. That? The end that? result of that is you don't engage. What you say, Lenny? I say you making it happen. <laughs> you don't discuss. Yo, I thought you paused it. That really was. Oh my god! You don't interact. I told you I didn't pause it. Because here's what I'm trying you to learned. catch you doing it now, and now he really not doing it. Lenny Haru here. Whatever here. your answer is. Did did he pause that long? <laughs> this Look, is the craziest man. thing I ever heard. Listen, this is propaganda for this. It, it is, it is, but you can't say it's not a valid conversation. You know, it's he not conversated one thing. He's been <laughs> rambling for 20 some minutes. <laughs> Being an apologetic black man to the uh, the dominant society. Who was he apologizing to? The dominant society. All right, man. All right, all right, all right man. All right. Let's let, let, it, we we good right because obviously Lenny is taking. Hold on, hold on. Let me get the screen. Get the screen right. So, do we even got to get through the rest? Of we that? keep playing, we playing the rest of it. If it is it a crescendo? Yeah, I believe so. I, I thought you was coming on board, but do, you, do we bring organs in and he start getting the hoop and holler? No. Oh, uh, never. Hey, okay. Marvin, are we on your phone? Yes. Yes, we established that. Early. Yeah, so go ahead, and, go ahead and lay it down so it don't look it don't look like that. Hey, look at that, Marvin. Magical, magical, man. I appreciate that, man. All right, y'all, y'all a regular bird and squirt, huh? <laughs> that sound like like a sexual maneuver. Yeah. I did a little bird squirt last night. <laughs> yeah, you know I fucked around had a little bird and squirt, man. <laughs> Y'all need y'all need to go on the road. <laughs> Man, if I want to get a COVID, I'll take y'all up on that. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. If it doesn't line up with what the cultural Marxist says it ought to be. Just let this ride. We letting this ride. Or with the person who is no. borrowing the ideology of the cultural Marxist says it ought to be. Or the person who is unwittingly falling prey. 
to the cultural Marxism that all of us have been saturated in, wants it to be, then you're wrong. You're damn right you're wrong. And you're a racist. And you're or, fucking or racist. in my case, Piece of shit. a sellout who's trying to curry favor with white people. Fucking coon, you, mother, you goddamn uh, <laughs> Uncle Ruckus ass motherfucker. Why His is boss is crazy. The but greatest in the if world. If you want to be how to orotate, this is a great Here's why it's important. study it's on important how to speak. Because this is I've already agenda. subscribed to his channel. Not just he about to get you. You about to get baptized the next six months. I'm all in. (laughs) It's a disruptive, transformative agenda. That's number one. God damn. And it's an agenda that needs to be recognized. (laughs) And an agenda that needs to be confronted. You asked for a definition. He's giving the second problem. And to me, this is. This is the sinister oh, part here of the Listen, problem. I've been with listening to his words. I, I'm just the I'm caught up in the part of this problem now. is here. that the end result of this agenda. See the white power hand sign? You see it? You is see it? Real pain, real sin, heavy with the white power, real brokenness that doesn't get addressed. Let me explain. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Everything. As By the way, sons of four who grew up in drug infested, gang infested. South Ooh. LA. Why is pants so slim? <laughs> the son of a single <laughs> teenage mother. He got jeans on. I look at the Mike Brown situation and this I was outfit is horrible. This ain't no real no real black man would come outside looking like this. Of the young black boys he like beard. him. Or the young black boys like me. He wasted a great beard. We can't live like that. I think I think Lenny talked over it. He, to he, all of the fathers who are not there, to the tune of nearly 75% young black boys like him, who are young black boys like me. We can't live like that. He talking to Michael Brown. To all of the fathers <laughs> who are not there, to the tune of nearly 75%. Among black children, <laughs> what I want to say is we have a that's problem. A great, that's the high that end of the night. Addressed. We can't live like this. We have to deal with this. There it is brokenness perfect. here that has to be addressed. There's brokenness that has to be fixed. But the way things stand now, to say that is to blame the victim. Do you know what that means? That means that whatever pathologies there are that need to be addressed, don't get addressed. Pathologies. Because it's the system's fault. And again, like Somebody I said at the beginning, at I am not arguing that, that there's no racism. <laughs> Fucking SP. I'm not arguing that there's no brokenness, that there's no injustice. Man, we got way too many people in prison in this country. This is a great Hall of Fame speech. Hey Amen, somebody. Can't for the NFL. We got way too many people in prison in this country. There's, there's something broken about that. See, and this is what you need to do on We're Friday night. You need to go to no club. Of our population than you like any enlighten yourself. in the world. <laughs> you need to watch There's idiots online and break them down and walk away and realize you in a better Especially space. Especially when a large number of those people are in there because of addiction to drugs. Free Malik. Hold it down, Malik. <laughs> I forgot what sign in. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Is that so an ad? Worry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, South Stream Yard, an environment best streaming platform in the world. Divided everyone up into constituents. In the world, Craig. <laughs> in the world. Which is incredibly ironic because what that creates is stereotypes.
and we look at everyone's issues, problems, whatever, in relation to the system. Man, go what the system him, man. How some pants? is doing, has done, needs to do. But who's running the system? Yeah. The white and man what that has the potential to do. I don't know about the white to man, move us no away idea what the white man could be. from addressing individuals <laughs> and their sin and their pain and their brokenness. He empathetic. Does this make sense? No. Because <laughs> we don't we don't have to be either or. It, it it doesn't have to be that you know either we address individuals and their sin and their brokenness, or, they, or we look at problems with systems and this and that. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> Why do I have great. to choose between advocating? for laws to change in the area of abortion, which disproportionately affects people. Well, nobody even talking about abortion. Where did abortion come from? See, that's what or, I'm talking about. Out of the blue, he thought abortion. Claiming out. the gospel with a view toward stick with changing it. the hearts of young women so that they won't kill their babies. Let's just talk about it, Lenny. Don't I'm make talking. me choose between those talking. two. I won't. Let's just have a conversation. I want both, Coach. <laughs> Tonight on the Lapeep show. Huh? <laughs> Are you a brand and Why do I have to choose between acknowledging the fact that there are huge problems and pathologies? And that's the first thing you said about two months. <laughs> both among individuals and cultures <laughs> and systems. And again, let me hasten to say, I'm not arguing that everybody who talks about justice issues. You have not made one argument. Is, is somehow <laughs> excluding both. But here's what I am saying. When we choose to talk about this in certain terms, and when we choose to accept certain ideologies and agree with certain premises, the end result is Isn't he trying to get us to agree with it? that if you don't find yourself on the right side of this, you never gave us the sides. You're disqualified. Is it mac and cheese, broccoli, coke? What's, what's going on? That can't be. Can't at all. That can't be. So what do you do with this? Um, in all honesty, I'm in a unique position. <laughs> I got magic melon. <laughs> I got some magic water. <laughs> so even though the there are people who will say certain things about me when I address well, I certain you. of these issues, um, I can say things that a lot of other people can. <laughs> Amen. 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 I've said to people, and I think Jesus was a Pharisee. Oh, Number yeah. one, I don't think it's likely that he would have gone through 33 years of living and not identified Yo, he he and Number two, Yo. theologically, all the rest of them, way far away from where he was. Number three, Yo. he hammered those dudes. Oh man, everyone is in a way he that he took a shot at Jesus. With. Number two, theologically, all the rest of them, way far away from where he was. Number three, he hammered those dudes. Oh, I went back. I ain't go back far enough. In no, a way he that he went at Jesus. I thought he was a Christian. When I address certain of these issues. Um, I can say things that a lot of other people can't. <laughs> Pause. Anything what black people say to white people? Amen. You know I can get rid of shit y'all can't. <laughs> I've said to people. Ain't never white people in that crowd, man. Number one, I don't think it's likely that he would have gone through 33 years of living and not identified with any of those groups. Number two, theologically, 
all the rest of them way far away from where he was. Number three, he hammered those dudes in a way that generally you only get away with. What you black? What do we get away with? with? When you what black? What do we get away with? When you black? There is something. What do we get away with? About that. When you black? But there's also something wrong about that. Because as we heard earlier, in Christ, there is now neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave, nor free, no male, no female. We're all one in Christ. That's like the head. Pop bottles. So we end up in a very unique situation. And this goes back to something that I said earlier. And it's controversial, and I don't want you to hear or understand this the wrong way. Because a lot of people are like, oh, you, you're telling black people to shut up. Nope. Oh, oh man. Hey, I'm that sorry, guys. horrible. I'm sorry, no, but guys. Oh. I had lined up in that beautiful black <laughs> Oh, my like God. It's like you do this on purpose. <laughs> but for me, there's something that I have to consider. Cisgender. <laughs> if I'm your brother, I'm your brother, Lenny. You know, I don't got no brother, so only child. And there is something between us. And there's something between me and you. It causes you Fritzy. to be afraid, apprehensive, unwilling to speak truth into my life. Then I gotta go the extra mile, man, to free you up to do that. Y'all just made me watch it's like the manuscript to Cooney. Is what? And you have to go the extra mile to trust our relationship in Christ. And do oh that. Lord. Well, that's hard, y'all. There is that. It's hard both ways, isn't it? When you're taking it. It's hard if Tom Pause. and I are friends and brothers in Christ. And there are things that Tom can see in my life. And I know that I can come back at him and play the race card. And maybe even prevent him from speaking to some of the things that he sees in my life. It's hard for me to say, I'm not going to do that to him. Hey, Ronda, you ever get your race car in the mail? And it's hard for him. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my race car. And I have the ability and opportunity people. to do that, to speak certain things into my life for fear that I might. And that's why one of the things that this culture of Marxism has exposed recently is a false unity. All right, Lenny, are you happy? Because we got people who for years, for years, have been talking about how unified we are in Christ. Who now are suddenly dismissing one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Church. Because of where they fall on a particular social issue. Mm. Damn. So the white folks at the founders and again, I'll say more about when that black members as the spoke goes. out on racial discrimination but during this time of upheaval. Correct. Just know that and he was he sent in to ease <clears throat> the white guilt in the congregation. That's why no clues that's why these about. things are important. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's important because there's an ideology here. There's a, there's a goal here. There's an end game here. And we see it in the world of politics. It, it has an, if you've been on a university campus at all recently, I have. you, you yeah. see this. It has to be addressed. Oh, Robert, <laughs> Secondly, because there are issues, real brokenness, real sin, real problems that if we're not it careful thing going on on campus we render ourselves unable or unwilling to address because of these ideologies that we've imbibed which means that finally we have to love the gospel enough and we have to love one another enough mm. Here's the great irony. The great irony is that, in a way, I'm borrowing language from the other side now. None of this clothes. The other match. side is always saying, check your privilege, right? <laughs> and I'm kind of saying that. I hope we did this on purpose. But here's the difference. Like, that's this thing. <laughs> I'm saying it to everybody. I'm not saying that if you're white, male, Heterosexual, cisgendered, able bodied. Able bodied, I'm with you. Native born, American, check your privilege. I'm saying if you are a member of the body of Christ, which, which is supposed to be everybody, right? And in this discussion, in this debate, I mean, not to them, learn but in general, how to yes. shut down the other side, regardless of who that other side is. Check that. Check take that shit. That, take that. Take that. But check yourself. Check that. Take that. Take that. And it's going to require boldness, boldness, both in terms of trusting our brothers and sisters in Christ I feel sure and he in terms of on it. willingness to speak to issues that in this day and age as far as trauma sausage. outright just castigated. <laughs> But the truth is worth it. <clears throat> hey, so uh, before we uh, go any further, now his last part, what it made me think about when he said, uh, when he was talking about that last part, uh, how the women are supposed to be into this, you know, hey, uh, women not getting paid, we need to stick together, blah, blah, blah. And then when it came down to it, you know, Rachel Nichols got mad and turned on the other woman and was like, oh, she only got this because she was black. Exactly. So you telling me, I watched this whole video for us to reference uh, Maria Thompson and Rachel Nichols. Well, well at the end, I, that's an example. Oh, because I could have dealt with it. We get talked about them two for two hours. I had, if I had, I was ready to go. Lenny, <laughs> I was saying that. I, he barely was the lead. He barely the lead, lead, Marvin. Huh? He buried the lead, Marvin. You buried the lead, Marvin. All right, so yeah. No, but I spoke to earlier. I just, uh, I mean, hey, man, he's a good public speaker. All right, but well, what about what Marvin said? I agree. I agree. Uh, it's some sh it's some shaking that's going on in that in that whole situation. But uh, I can um, honestly say, from the knowledge I have of the situation, uh, I appreciate the way the sister Maria Thompson handled this. He handled it on a high queen level. That's what I take from it. I just take from if it didn't affect her and she kept her thing in motion, I appreciate her for what she is. I actually heard something. Joe Budden podcast. He played a clip. And she had posted on social media around the time that was acknowledged when she probably originally heard that conversation. And she was just, she went out there and was just telling young black women that want to be have a position, that they got to keep pushing and moving. You have obstacles. Some people are not going to like what you're doing, but you got to trust your abilities and keep pushing forward, which is real symbolic. It was, you know, it was, it was in the past when she first got knowledge of the situation, but 
just to hear her words. I was like, she, I just felt she's on the right path. Nothing else is going to knock her off. And she bought to get paid. If we go to a game six in the finals, she getting paid. Dumb money. So I would take it. Uh, what y'all feel about uh, Jason Whitlock? Because, you know, he has his little show on uh, Blazing and uh, he came out on the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How he came Who out. Who really care about what Jason Whitlock think about it? Hey, I listen to everybody, even if I don't agree with no, you. Gotta, it's you about getting perspective. You got to know yeah. what your enemy's thinking. But I, I just find it. <clears throat> In, in this instance, since we're talking about it, and he was like, oh, she's, you know, he went after Maria Taylor. Like, she's making herself a victim. So well, I just think he's playing the character for the sake of being the a- adversary to the different conversations where he's capitalizing on capitalism, getting a check. It, pretty much, I would put him in the same boat. I put the man we just saw talk about cultural Marxism. They all together. I just level me in. Because when I was a black man, I can't knock no other black man hustle in this American system. Get it how you getting it. I don't gotta honor it, but I ain't gonna knock it. So I, I understand what Jason Woodlock doing. He giving you that other side hardcore hard line, and it's what's feeding him. So I can't knock it. So what what part of all right, what do we what is what is cultural Marxism? How about that? Let's, let's talk about it. Yeah, what what is what's cultural? Well, I Marxism. got Haru here. He he's about to break it down. What what what's cultural Marxism? Hey, oh, let's stop digging from, in my mouth. From the, lecture, from the lecture that I just heard, I can't really uh, define it. This, this, there was no definition. It it seems like a a mindset that that people have come up with to separate um, based on ideology and attack other people and to create more separatism. You know, um, that, that leads to you know, in his opinion, sin is sin. You know what I mean? So it's, it's separating us from one another. It's causing more friction and um, doesn't allow people to get together and love one another properly from his 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 definition. But um, what I, what, For my brief issue with it is, is it was more of a construct of a right-wing conservative talking point that it just kept pushing and kind of spread to the mainstream as an as actual thing, but it really doesn't exist. It's just people trying to combat uh, other people's views Nothing, you know, nothing built on a foundation. What 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 I got from it, excuse me, bro. What I got from it was uh people will take issues such as racism and other very divisive things and use that to their advantage to push their own agendas. And I got out of it, you know just tell the truth, you know, uh, just like the, you know, like Lenny said, we wasn't there with the uh, Michael Brown. So you have to go with what, what, what are the facts of the case? You know, was, was it a, a hands up, don't shoot or, you know, Hey, it was, it was, it was people there. His homeboy was there. You know, if you were his homeboy, you know, do we say, Hey man, yeah, he, he messed up, you know, he wasn't there. You know, or do you, do you stay with, hey, man, you know, that cop shot him. I just think it, it's about holding everybody accountable. Like, if all of us right here, if if something is going, if you're not doing right, this and that, I should be able to hold you accountable if I'm your brother. But when does that accountability change? Does it change because we get into it with a white cop? Right. Yeah. And that's the... It- that's, I believe that's the tricky, it's a tricky part of life. And unfortunately, slippery slope. yeah, it's the slippery slope. And what, what I want to add is, um, this is something you probably have to watch three or four times and you have to take notes. I, I kind of, I will never watch this again. But hold on now. I'm about to tell you oh, why. Okay. Um, because if you, if you take out what you disagree with, right? Like the whole, um, the idea of what the, the angle he's coming from. Uh, <clears throat> it's basically a, a little bit of a sermon about being able to take on that sort of uh, that urge not, not an urge, it's the uncomfortableness of having to do something like really really great like that's it's, that's what he's trying to, to paint is that we, we're unable to do that because of this thing called uh, cultural Marxism it's, it's a narrative he's trying to 
to promote and it's very hard to get because it's it's just complex of of trying to think that you're in a society and you're thinking one way and then somebody else is playing you another way it's just it's just hard to rationalize and he's to me it's yes, like it's, yes yes it is man but look, look at us we everybody on the screen is is a, a well individual <laughs> Like yeah, to, yeah, 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 to yeah. talk to everybody on here, you know, we have an able body, a, able body. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, we have other people out here, Marvin, and I don't know who they are. Somebody just says guest, and then there's a Jay Will. That's Jason Williams, my partner. He should play for the Kings, Sacramento, out of West Virginia. He know Randy. No, that, that's that's uh, Johnny Stud. You know. Oh, okay, okay. I'm I sorry, man. Not. Johnny Stud, I didn't brought I didn't I didn't brought you on, on in, man. I, I'll mute your mic, brother. Yeah, if it's if it's on you, you can unmute your mic if you can hear us. But we're gonna keep it, we're gonna keep it going, guys. I when I see your mic come come on, I bring you back up. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But yeah, it's, it's a, it was a, it was a very good video. I had a, I enjoyed watching with you brothers, but um for me, the the evangelical Christian. Uh, anything he ploys with me, any type of conversation falls with deaf ears. It's from the knowing what the nature of an evangelical Christianity is. So it's, it's hard for me to get to that first front. It's kind of like if someone tell you, like, yo, I'm going to talk to you about Scientology. You go, hey, man, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shut out. That's you ever so been in LA on the strip and they come with the pamphlets and, hey, man, pause. I'm cool. All right. That's so little. I want to share. I want to share a screen real quick and just. Can everyone see that? Uh huh. Mm, right. Yes, sir. Most definitely. So this was, I think, Urban, Urban Dictionary, and this is cultural Marxism. Their definition. All right. Cultural Marxism is sometimes labeled as a conspiracy theory by people on the far left, but this definition explains how most people use the term in political conversation. Marxism can be summed up as what well, we heard what Marxism is, and we're not going to bury the lead on this one, I guess. Cultural Marxism is used by most people. Cultural Marxism is used by most people refers to a kind of behavior that looks for power imbalances in everyday culture, like asking a person where they are from or complimenting a black person's hair and problematizing. Is that the word? Those interactions causing it people to. Now. It is now causing problematizing. people. Problematizing. Problematizing those interactions, causing people to resent others. That is not it. For innocuous little social misdemeanors. Now, this is what a person is going to go to, you know, some on the internet. Does that sound like anything we just saw? Mm, that no, not at all. No, no. I mean, what you just read is just the identifies of playing the American game. You got to play the game to get ahead. So it's just really what epitomized the, you know, what our society is today. Now, as far as going about to get along, if you want to be in the get along game. Some things you described to. Hey, now, we man. have a chat. Uh, our guest is uh, is uh, my daughter Hanea. She's uh, listening in. She says, "Great show." Oh, appreciate. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shout I out to Hanea. Really it. It's my goddaughter. Big love. Uh -huh. All right. So we putting up definitions from the Urban Dictionary. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I brought that up to see how weird. That you would get something where somebody normally goes. Look, there's no definition uh, for this. No, it's an idea. It's just something. It's, well, for my understanding, it's something that was appropriated in uh, right wing media that was thrown out to combat ideas. They call it cultural Marxism that spread over the last 10 years or so to become what somebody want to identify as ideology. But it's not nothing truly on paper that identifies what this belief is. And that that's 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 not weird to nobody. No, well, it's America, man. Yeah, it's not weird, but it's the internet. You can feed post whatever you want. You can go on TV and say outlandish things aren't true, as long as you say it confidently, and you okay. Like, like it's called we, freedom of speech. Look, Wiki. It, it the only thing it associates itself with is conspiracy theory. Yeah, no, Wiki is great. Wiki is great. It can put you in the rabbit hole quick. On uh, Wiki search, you could be up for four hours researching something. Yeah. Watch some documentaries, but we gonna. Am I supposed to say that nothing that that man was saying made sense? Well, the ideology, anything that's ideology is an unproven theory. It's nothing that is proven that this works this way in every scenario all the time. 
Okay. So we understand that all ideologies is unproven theories. Okay. So just take it, take it for what it's worth. Uh, the people, a lot of people try to put it literally as they can to uh, uplift their side, but it's just an idea. Everybody's okay. free to think and make up ideas and think what they think is best for the world. All right. So are any of those things problems? Like the things that he's trying to address, are they, do you think they're serious problems? Do you, do you think the Mike Brown case is a serious problem? To me, I think that's a serious problem. If that was my son, I would be it, I would be hurt if that was the story of his death that he had just Mike hit. Brown's death is a byproduct of a broken system. Hold oh, okay. I just want to finish what I was saying. I just wanted to wrap up. Stop. Oh, I thought you was done. My fault. You was, you know, I, I listen, I'm gonna go on mute. No, hey, don't 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 go that bad. Oh, Look, that but that would be a sad story for me if that was my son's demise and I was a and I was a father in his life. Like if, if if that was what I raised me right now at this age, I would I would be hurt by that. But I don't know if that's the narrative. You know that that could be. But, but I don't know his father's. I don't know if his father was in his life. If his father was, I don't know the nature of his, of his upbringing. I do know he was living at was a hard time place within hard times, hard time neighborhood. But I don't. We can't. I can't vouch if his mother's a good mother, his father's a bad father. No, nah, I'm talking the opposite most, of that. I'm talking the action. No, see, not, you cut me off now. Because you, you see how I work both ways. You're about to go and explain something I'm not talking about. That's it. That's why I just cut it off. I, I'm talking the Wait, opposite. I'm, we'll talking, break it down. I'm talking about the action. The action of just the strong arm robbery to cross the street, to reach inside the car, to maybe grab the gun of the like that whole scenario would, would bother me. Like if that's what I got called to the precinct. It was for, like, yo, post. I, I heard information. Uh, go ahead. I'm, go ahead yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's it right there. Well, I, I, heard, I heard information that posts the original uh, explanation that it wasn't really a strong on robbery, that Mike Brown had the weed and he would get them the weed and it was just a, let me get a box of blunts. It was a mutual thing they would do because that he was, they connect with the weed. And okay. that's how I understand it. it came after things got fleshed out from the media, media, uh, media releases of what possibly happened off of the video footage. The, uh, it was admitted that the people that ran the store in there and Mike Brown had a relationship. Marvin, is is are these stories any different from what you heard? Oh, I I never heard that, but I don't I don't have the inside scoop. Like I said, I just saw what the media showed him in the store. Because uh, if that's the case, because you, you saw the the uh, video and the little guy was running after him trying mm. to get him to pay, so. I, like I said, I, I just really don't know what happened. But I wish his homeboy that was with him again would would tell would tell the story and and get it. Well, what, what if that is what if what I just said is the story? You put me in a bad spot now. I'm not I'm not about to say that about my homie. Like he he's dead. Like I'm still upset about that. I don't care that he just did the robbery, and I don't care that he went at the cop like that. I'm more upset that he gone. Like that's if you're telling me you can get murdered for stealing some Swiss sweets, we got to revalue some. But that wasn't that wasn't that how it happened. For. Yeah, that's not that's not that's just. I, I that's, understand. I understand what you guys. I understand the thing, the story you guys were, were speaking about earlier. I was just throwing it out there that oh. if you if you arrive on the scene and something happened, it's it's the reason why Mike got, Brown got killed is just a breakdown of American society. It's not really much that unique to that situation. It's just many levels. Our society is broken and no one's trying to fix it. You know, so it's just not, it's the school system there. It's the idea that he just free roam as a teenager. He don't got no guidance. It's the idea that he felt, if, if he attacked the cop, he felt comfortable attacking the cop. It's the idea that the cop, a grown man that's a law enforcement officer, can't handle a teenager. It's a big issue. You know, it's a lot of different moving parts to this. We hiring people to be police officers in communities that they don't belong to that really aren't men yet. So how are you going to command another man if you're not confident in your manhood? All right. That's beautiful. Now, I want to I want to chime in because your man, he led with um, a biblical reference. I think it was one Corinthians chapter 12. Did you say Caribbeans? Corinthians. He said Corinthians. He said Corinthians. He, yeah, he's one, one, one Caribbean. One Caribbeans. One Caribbean. One Caribbeans. <laughs> two, two, uh, two jerks. <laughs> two jerks and three shots. Of, and three shots of rum, baby. Uh, but back to yeah, the Michael Brown. Said, 
back First to the Brown situation. I don't care if it's a midget, a Chinese midget. If the police tell you, hey, man, stop, you, you don't try to take the gun from the cop. You don't okay. do that. Okay. Hey, man, sometimes people in in most situations, make it rational things. I know, but, but I know. Hey, I've been there. Sometimes you got to get second, you know, hey, but well, let me just relax. It is the police. Because right I'll, tell tell you, I'll tell you what, I'll bring, I'll bring it home. If you in Irv somewhere and y'all discussing something with a guy and you got a gun and he tries to take your gun. Are you, hey, brother, hey, we, we brothers, man, don't, don't do this. No, it's like. So the thing is, you speaking in fallacy about situations that not, never no, happened. I'm giving an example. If, I would say if, this never happened. All right. You said okay. me and Erin was in conversation <laughs> and I had a gun on me and the man tried to take it. No, I said if you and Erin was somewhere and y'all was talking to another guy, y'all was having a, a discussion or a misunderstanding with another guy and he tried to take your gun. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> it would happen Listen. because just like if I'm you, talking to you just, and my gun just, on me, just, it's just a like, serious conversation. Just like, just it's like real you had serious. To re remove somebody before they shot up a party. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's me. You had right. to remove me before. I was, I was going to light that bitch up, nigga. I don't give a fuck. If right. I was there, you wouldn't have did it. We thought about exactly. it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. If, exactly. If, exactly. If, exactly. If I was demonstrating on somebody, if I was demonstrating because I was in the right, it's the only time where I move like that is out of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I had my, you do think he going to reach for my gun? First of all, I don't walk around with a gun on me. If I had a gun on me with a purpose of defending myself from aggression, Ain't nobody reaching for my gun. So why is it that you can you can be so confident in explaining this, but when he said the same thing, you had an issue with it, and it was right. who the uh, him or the other guy? Because you, <laughs> the you, other you guy, can, you <laughs> the can say, "Hey, man, ain't no, ain't no ain't no young kid gonna uh, reach inside of because that that sounds absurd to me. Ain't no young. It doesn't kid. all sound absurd to me. It doesn't yeah. at all. It does, it does sound absurd. Well, it's well, a well, real way that can happen if you look at a cop a, that you don't respect as a man. That, uh, as a kid, I'm going to reach into a cop's car and try to take his gun. That's absurd to me. Yeah. What, what I, age I don't, do I don't you know, consider a kid? Maybe, maybe, maybe you was on a, it's on not, a reference. What age do you consider a kid you, right you now? Just, you, you, you don't do that type of stuff. And just In like 2021. Said, nobody do it to you. Just like somebody will try a cop, somebody will try you too. Yeah, because if you go if you go to South Dallas right now, where they started killing people, and just yeah. like I just talked, I'm to my not sister, going to South Dallas. Not just like I time. just talked to my sister in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. She's telling me somebody's dying every day. They pulling guns on people, so that man can can talk about that. But oh, nothing will never happen to me. This and that, and that's because you telling me about places I ain't going. That's where the discussion breaks down because you you want to be totally right. And not see anything else. That's what I'm just saying. You you're not in a bubble. Let's look at everything. Yes. It's absurd that a teenager will reach in a cop's car and try to get that gun. And yeah, that's a breakdown of, of parental things. That's a breakdown. But that ain't really got to do nothing with else. The, that. Ain't got nothing to do with cultural Marxism. Hold on, hold on. What? Let's not deflect it. We talked about yeah, the yeah, yeah. I want to break <laughs> it down because he was naming <laughs> cities. He was named South Dallas, Shreveport, Magnolia, Third World. I'm not never visiting them places. It's yeah, you are. never. Hold on, hold That's on. That's on my list of places hold to on. avoid in life. Hold no, on, the on. right Gorilla Corporation invested down there. We and yes, the trip. yes, you hold on, yeah. Down there, Lenny. Yeah, so hold on before we let's pump the brakes on that. <laughs> All right, we are trying to be everywhere. It, ain't, ain't no city. <laughs> Too far for the white gorilla corporation. Listen, if I go to Shreveport, right. I'm going to the hood in the daylight hours. Now listen, listen. And I'm working with people. Now we're going, we going to the Cooper Road at twelve o'clock midnight. Mm -hmm. Len, Lenny, if if Scoop or Swoop pulled that shit at eighteen, we would be mad. We'd be so upset. But me and you would be like, "What the fuck was they thinking?" Like that would be our conversation. Like because because of who we are and we raised yeah, but it would never kids. it would never happen 
I, okay, but we know it can happen because it happened, and we're saying it's how do you... not live in a vibe, man. Well, that's that's that is a colloquial right. thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Yep. That's correct. You made yeah. that step to make sure your kids is not in that type of environment. Yes, sir. And I and I should only worry about myself because even though we are all of God, I'm gonna only focus on me. Yep. That's what I'm gonna do. No, right, I I'm just not focus on you. I'm just saying is it's just uh. Uh, it's a unique situation to Mike Brown. It's not a common thing. If you go to Scenario, he cop challenged him. He reached in the gun, try to got a cop's gun. That's not some every black man's doing. That's, that's not the history of black men. That's that's correct, Lenny. And we just want he could have the bank. He been fed up with the system that day and willing to risk it all for all we know. We don't have a day that man was at. Well, what's the story? <laughs> the story loose. <laughs> It's very loose. We just they, they just arrest Bill Cosby for something he admitted to in the past that they want to arrest him for. Man, the deflection be real. Man. I'm telling God. me that I gotta trust the media's depiction of the Mike Brown situation. No, we we passed the media part of this. We're we're talking about us and again. I feel like y'all ganging up on me. Nah, nah, because one, you didn't watch it, so it just feels rough to you because you you already probably, you know it. And second. After watching it, I'd have jumped out in five minutes. I'd have jumped out. And I'd have lied. And I'm like, I forgot what he's talking about. Yeah, I've seen it. All right. So, all right. Okay. Hey, Haru, Haru got a statement. Uh, L- jump on in there, baby. Yeah, at, at the end of the day, man, we, we can't. We don't know Mike Brown's destiny. We don't know what Mike Brown came here to complete. You know what I mean? We don't know what he, he did in his past life, what his karma that he brought into this situation was, why he had to go out the way he went out. You know, he could have done some things in the past life. We have no insight in that. You know what I mean? And stuff. And we don't know the lens to which he was looking at the world, how he was like Lenny was saying, how he's feeling that day. You know, if he was fed up, if he was overwhelmed, if he if it was just depression was getting too much or whatnot. We don't know what that cop was dealing with. And we only have what the media fed us. Right. We have we have the, the information that's on the Internet and we have what the media fed us to consume. And, and we're making a judgment based on our own lens and our own perspective. And at the end of the day, our perspective is based on how we were raised. How, what we believe in, you know what I mean? How we see the world, our interactions with the world. And 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 nine times out of 10 is how we feel the world should, should function, but it's not always how the world will function or should function. It's based on our perspective and our opinion. And we, we've been taught in the society to really rely on our opinions and our beliefs, you know what I mean? And our thinking to make a choice. And that, that, that gives us um, a, 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 a connection to our animalistic nature. We, we identify with our habits, we identify with our beliefs, we identify with our expectations, but we don't really identify with something that's empirical. I said that before, you know, we have, we have judgment, we have skin in the game when we make these decisions. Even that brother that was talking today about, um, you know, this, this subject matter, he has skin in the game. He was really trying to get people to, to, to live as what he understands Christianity or Christians to be, you know what I mean? And love, love each other, you know, the way that he thinks people should love each other, but he didn't really even get understand what necessarily understand what the term love meant, you know, in he, order to uh, find that. Yes, he yes, correct. Wrong with that. So I just, I just, you know, we, we got a lot of opinions same, in the room, same. Know, but we don't have any facts in the room. Hey. We don't have, we got a lot of judgment in the room, but we don't have something like an oracle to say, okay, yeah, this is right, wrong, left, up and down, right? So can I, can I sort of throw in a little Easter egg? Of course. All right. <clears throat> so everything we're talking about, it correlates to the scripture he gave in the beginning. I didn't hear the scripture. Okay. Um, he never he, ne- he never said it. He just said what it was. He was horrible. He never even read the scripture. He said, hey, look this up and started talking. He did I, read I thought it. Herb was about to read the scripture. And hey, Lenny, man, hold on. And Lenny he cut me off. He don't know nothing. He don't own the Bible. Secondly, <laughs> it was for comedic effect. Just roll with it. Just roll with me sometime, all right? All right, all right I'll roll with you. Now, <clears throat> Now, did he come from Caribbean oh or God. What, is, what did the scripture say? Oh it's Corinthians. God. You heard the oh man say First God. Corinthians chapter 2, verse 69. And Luke said... I thought he said Chronicles. Second Chronicles. First, uh, first and the book, Chronicles. The book, the book of St. John, the Funkster. Oh, yeah. He said, he said Chronicles, right? Yes. Not first. He said Chronicles. Lenny keep uh, fucking what? me up because he know I don't I can't remember a fucking uh Bible now, we, book listen, to save my not, life. We went over this Bible verse seven times today, I believe. Yes. So, so why it's, are we it's, talking it's, about Corinthians then? Because I, I keep <laughs> messing it up. I keep he messing never it said up. Chronicles. I no, think he, you said, wrong. he said Chronicles. Okay, That's so a movie which, series. Which one is it? He said Chronicles first or Corinthians. Corinthians. Is it the Chronic? He said Chronic <laughs> Chronicles are written. <laughs> Did y'all get that? 
<laughs> he said Chronicles of Riddick. I think I think it was pitch black. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. What does this motherfucker say? But anyway, he said, he said Chronicles, man. All right, is it Chronicles? Because like, people are gonna look this up, and it's 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 gonna be lightweight fire. I so, I don't know. I thought it was Caribbean. After I'm betting my money on Corinthians. I'm not sure, but All if right. you're taking a poll. So, I'm putting money on Corinthians. I'm putting okay. money on Chronicles. All right, so we got money on Chronicles, money on Caribbean, and money on Corinthians. The reason I say Chronicles because he was talking about uh, the war that King David and King David is old testimony. Uh, Paul, yes. what, Paul, it's testament, huh? Oh, it's old <laughs> testament. Yeah, and, and Corinthians is in the uh, New Testament. That's Paul. See, Paul, listen, he called it testament testimony. Go with go with Corinthians. Yeah. What's the what's the scripture? How about All right, that? I just I would like to just you know talk he about. He was that. talking about King David. <laughs> I was I thought you was pulling up as he was doing this. You weren't pulling it he up. He was talking about King it. David and, okay. the, and the uh, people coming to uh to his aid for war. So for war. Paul wasn't writing about that in the New Testament. So that, that was the Old Testament. So that's that's Chronicles. All right, so that's that's one Chronicles, chapter twelve. All right, all right, all right. And what oh, is that? No. I'm not reading that whole thing. I'm just going to where what, what he went to. What verse? That's what I'm what verse? I'm look, gentlemen, I'm I'm trying. <laughs> y'all know I don't know nothing about what I'm doing in no Bible. What's the verse? <laughs> Chapter 12, and I think he started at verse 32. Let me make sure. He sailed to the Caribbean. <laughs> what is wrong with you? First Caribbeans. Uh, thou said Bob Marley. <laughs> okay, we know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not about to do this. I'm not about to go find it. Yet. I'm just going to. Thou said Bob Marley, the man that wrote the first joint, shall be blessed. And you can go and look it up. It was whatever chronicles. Listen, don't look this video up. If you were a uh, outstanding self righteous black man, can I just this get this out? Ruin your day. Go can ahead, I just I'm get sorry. this out? All right. So it was David. David had basically called up all the tribes of, uh, I guess, of the land to take over Israel, to take back Israel from um, black people. If, if that's the if if, if that's the the lineage, then yes. But this is this is a, a allegory of the story. Was it the tribe of Judah? All of them. Every. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Hey, oh, Judah, this. Joshua, Arab, A A Arab music. Yeah, all of so King David was stealing, stealing the land of Israel from black people that lived there. He was murdering black people. Correct. That's, That's that. yes. This is the this okay. is the, this is the story. Got now it. he tries to let you know about the, the I guess it's the Ishar tribe. Okay. Uh, Ish, Ishawa, Ishar, Ishar, I think was the. Let's go, go with Ishar. It's just Ishar. Ride, ride it out. All right, we'll go with Ishar. And they were they were presented in the in Genesis uh, before, and they their references like the donkey, like their blessing. They're one of the original sons of, is it Abraham? Father Abraham. So he's you, know, the, you know the song? No, no, I don't know this. They're, I'm just giving you. Okay. A, just trying to get it out, Lenny, without being interrupted, so I don't forget. Appreciate it, Lenny. Now, uh, they're one of the I'll original original tribes that got blessed and their blessing was the that they were able to bear the burdens like a donkey uh and that's what they call like they, they reference them as a donkey because they can bear the burden uh of injustices so that's the people who only you only needed 200 of them like everybody was given thousands of of people to fight the war you know all these people were coming from all over but they only needed 200 of this specific tribe and it specifically says because they knew what to do or like what Israel needed to do, like. So I mean, where you, you want me to find? Oh no, no, I was I was. He had brought up. Uh, you knew your mic is unmuted, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, so, he had brought up one chronicles, and I was like, that ain't that ain't it. That is. Right. Yeah, so you, so you was wrong. So sit, sit, cat, you want my cash up? Oh it's no, first I was right. it's thirty two. Verse 32. Okay, okay. I, I said I did say 32, so I did pretty yeah. good. I did pretty good. Right. Um, but it, it's, these, story. it's these finish people, allegory, brother. It's these people um that they focus on uh because there was there was if it was a black tribe, you know, if it was whatever, whatever it was, they were 
they were better at <clears throat> disseminating information and getting people His to understand things. Are better than yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he'd be like disseminating information. <laughs> hey, I, I'm trying to get this out, man. I'm sorry. The tribes of Abraham, <laughs> Father Abraham, is that. And they're this this burden, I guess, is what's necessary to try to resolve a lot of issues we have. Like you have to be willing to take on these burdens because we we know there are problems, and we's like, yo, it's not just how we say about the Mike Brown. Like we don't know how his day was going. It's all these things we don't know. But what we do know is that nobody said, well, this is what this is how he wanted to live his life. If his life was going to end, it, this this is how it would have went out. We know that didn't happen. So we You're have to Dr. assume. Bachman right now. I don't know what what's your point. <laughs> what's your point, baby? <laughs> it's a str- it's going to be hard to correct these things and we're not even able to talk about them. Like we don't who else talks about these things in a group? But you notice that all the things he spoke of they Apparently, were actually evangelicals do. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just it's, But it's, it's not like he didn't name things. You know the Obama angle is real. It's weird that all these things That's are taking- an easy question bag. That's yes, it is, but I'm just though. I'm just saying we I still don't hear people like saying we in mass I don't, like people. I don't see people in mass saying, yo, I don't really appreciate how Obama treated us. That's not no normal conversation, but it could be because, a real conversation. Because you get in trouble. Look, they took Tavis Smiley's show. They wouldn't uh uh Carnell, Dr. Carnell uh West, they uh wouldn't give him his uh tenure. You, his tenure. Everybody they, they I don't fault that. You can't speak on truly on black issues. And I, think I'm, I'm joking, Lenny. I'm joking. I hope okay. he was joking. I was hoping. Them people he named. You yeah, them two people if you, he if named. You line and you gonna speak on real black issues? You understand? You won't have sanctuary and in white institutions. Okay. You understand that? I, I, That's what I was it is. joking, Lenny. Yeah, but let me let me get mine off. Let me see my funky off. <laughs> I'm on the roll here. All right, but this this bothers me because there are no platforms. For men to try to hash these things out because there are sons, there are nephews, there are uncles, there are mothers or aunts. You know, a lot of these problems are happening with our people, and we really don't have a solution for it because the problems we can't talk about. It's like taboo. It's, it's like victim blaming to to be to be harsh on these things. But we how can else talk can we about them. We got to, we, we need to create the forms amongst our communities across America to have uh, safe zones. We could talk amongst each other. Now, what that man was doing, he was talking amongst black folks' problems and evangelicalism amongst white folk. That's something different. Yeah, but, but what about we? What about what we talking about? What I'm talking about? All right, that's well. I, the, the, my whole conversation is predicated on this video I watched this evening. So understand that I can't get that time back. No matter what I do. It ain't coming back. So I'm going to level everything on this brother with the great uh, edit, sometimes edit, sometimes just natural great pauses that I, I don't believe. I don't really believe you can it is sincere with your tech, what you're speaking on. But I'm just saying, how do we amongst ourselves have these conversations that don't uh, be intercepted? Is this, is this a, a form? We, have, we need, you know, it's a sense of community amongst black people that that is not is missing. Since community that I remember having when I was growing up, that somehow between childhood and adulthood got uh, wiped away. Yes, it does. It doesn't exist. To your point, to your point though, Irv, there are pockets in the community that where this is happening. There are conversations that are that are happening. You know, candidly, where where brothers are are, are speaking in open forums. You know, out here in this area in Pacific Northwest, we meet. Um, once every Friday, brothers get online and have these conversations. We're out in the park having these conversations. We're building constantly. You know what I mean? There's sisters doing the same thing. There's organizations that have been around for 40, 50 years that have been doing this. You know, they're not going to get play on the media. They're not going to be on mainstream public. It's word of mouth, you know, where you can step in. You know what I mean? People aren't marketing. They're not proselytizing. They're not doing the Christian thing where we're going out and saying, hey, look, you know, join my team. You know, you need to get down with me, stuff like that. We're just out here, each one teach one. So that stuff is happening, you know, but you you got to be, um, boots on the ground. People are having those conversations. We can't just blanketly state that nobody's talking about it. We're talking about it and people are actually activating outside and they're not, 
they're not Democrat. They're not Republican. They're not left or right. They're just telling the truth. Like, look, man, it's hard out here. There's things that we come up against. And, you know, we don't fit any of these boxes. We don't want to fit any of these boxes. We're going to study our list, our literature, our, our history, and we're going to live right and live true. Yeah, that, that is true. I don't, I, I don't You see, I ain't cut him off at one point because he had a concise <laughs> statement with no gaps in it, with no hiccups. He was like, this is my thought. I'm going to verbalize it. I agree with it. But you see, it wasn't no gaps in it, right? Uh, it wasn't. So he, he it was don't beautiful. have a dramatic That's a beautiful statement. Down yet, though. No, no. Nah. If he get that him. shit, he can I'm start his own religion. If he gets dramatic <laughs> pauses together, he can start a religion. All right. <laughs> I second that. I, second I pause that. a lot on Wednesday night. If y'all check in on Wednesday night, that's when I pause. Most I will most definitely. But I, I agree with you, brother. It's just it's just uh it's it's I got but the hub, the hub idea. We must have a uh, like minute black man community amongst each other. You know, it's not so much the idea of we got to suck people in, but like minded people got to start building together. Because, you know, it's one thing if you if you walk down the street every week on Wednesdays and see a group of 500 brothers always meeting, looking positive as a brother, you're going to stop by that. Hey, man, what y'all doing? I want to get in on this. You know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's, it's a magnetism to it. But we just got to, we just got to uh, put it in practice in a way. And, and and that's just those are just facts, right? I, I I'm a, I'm ashamed that if if fifteen hundred black men were together in one place, that somebody would agitate it. How and did you come up with that number? I thought Lenny had said he if he saw fifteen hundred. I thought Lenny said that number. Oh, yeah. No, only 1500. I know 1500 nothing. It's a production company out of LA. Make what, great music. But I didn't a, say that about 1500. What amount Different. of yeah, what amount of people did you say, Lenny? I was just saying, uh, I probably said that. I'm just trying to all right. I mean, it's being recorded. Like it's what's wrong with y'all? It's being recorded. I don't know the peel, but it's an idea of breaking down a foundation. Of uh, like-minded talking. black men community, like our brother, our brother with the Nat Turner Society, the idea of is it breaking down the idea of a, it's a built-in uh, defect when black men see black men that you may not personally know, we put our guards up for some strange reason. We want to let you know we tough. It's just breaking down that wall as a start, you know, like hey, brother, I see you. you. Let your family, brother, have a good time. This is a good spot. I've been before, but we always see each other like who this. You put the mug on, and it's just it's encoded, but we got to break that coding. And and yeah, so I was <clears throat> I was leaning more towards that how it's it's an uncomfortableness amongst us, and it's not because of us. Like we really cool with each other, but our surroundings, things that we see, the way we're portrayed, is in a negative light. And but fifteen hundred, <laughs> that's a lot of people. I'm 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 getting nervous. I'm like, why? Yeah, I can make it happen. Hey, man. <laughs> If you got the money and the resources, <laughs> no, I don't saying, if you walk up and see fifteen hundred brothers, you're like, "Hey, man, what but the, manicure let, beards." Hold on, what what event? Where are you? The closest thing from? we got was the Million Man March to this I type wish, of uh, I, I idea. Wish I, could, I wish I could just say what I was about to say. I mean, you know, you like you like Toba, I cut you off, but you be shoot me at the hip every time I open my mouth. At the ankle, at the ankle, quick at ankle. What scenario do you have with a mass? group of people being aggressive towards anybody what reality of that do you have america no you can't what when, what what day was this when did this happen when when hundreds of of, of black people just became aggressive towards any oh you said black people First yeah said people I'm sorry, black, I said, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, black no, no, no. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't. You have don't been aggressive. They, they, they mobbed up and they have been aggressive to not agitators, them. never agitators, reactors. All right. All right. So that's this what I this what I'm talking about. Like something that doesn't even exist bothers us. Doesn't even exist. It's never happened. And if we saw a bunch of us <laughs> in one area, we like, oh, I don't know, man. You know, it could be a problem. No, it won't. <laughs> It's well, I, think, I, think, I think everybody I, I, on the floor. I think you're living in La La Land because I, I know uh, even if I go up to the uh, the hilltop, you 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 got to you got to keep your head on the swivel. But we y'all got a hilltop it. too. Yes, they do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. well, I'm at the hilltop. Ain't shit neither. Your hilltop ain't shit. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! I'm from the hilltop over here, man. It's, 
Yeah, <laughs> where I'm from, that shit neither. I'm like, it must be something in naming. You yeah. gotta reconfigure the neighborhood names. Yeah, because they walking around with two 11s up there on the hilltop. Well, it's, so. it's gentrified. Oh, in the hilltop, it's 13 year old short on heroin. Where I'm from. <laughs> Well, the hilltop is gentrified now too. We, but we, to that point about the the gathering of people, man. Like, for instance, Juneteenth just passed. You know, I don't know where y'all at, but out here in, in Seattle area, there was Juneteenth out there. There's 3,500 people in in one park, black people. There was no white people there. You know what I mean? There was not mm -hmm. one problem. Not you know, one. Not one fight. Not one. Not one flare up. There was no pistol play. None of that. You know what I mean? And, and the pop, the message was positive. People were up on stage having those conversations. That happened in Atlanta as well. So we have to we have to start realizing that this stuff can happen and has happened. It's already yes. been done. And like you said, Irv, you remember when we went down to that park where all those uh black the black vendors, yeah, the black, the vendor black vendors. We went down there. It was cool. cool. Wasn't no problem. They were we, selling food. They were yes. selling uh, clothes. They were selling jewelry. Man said, "Hey, I also got them pints." You remember? It was you know, it was love. Hey. Things happen everywhere. Yeah, like, you know, on. they just they just happen. But we don't get the luxury of that narrative. We have a negative narrative. A, a wise man told me one time that if the book wasn't created, I would have to write it myself. So we got to write our own narrative, brother. That has to be a uh, Ra Amin Unifer. Somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to that man. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to that, that man. That's what I mentioned earlier. Uh, in the in the form of that uh that Kendrick Lamar that Kendrick Lamar verse, correct? Where it's just we have to. It, it has a point that us as black men have to understand it is what it is, and we got to start building our own foundation, writing our yeah. own hieroglyphs on how we proceed from here. Right. We can keep looking back and keep complaining how things weren't right, but we here now, and we have a power to make a decision and action plan to make a different move. And we got to get out that that stays of. It's like we always developing a plan, but nobody's executing a plan. Well, well, yes, yes, yes. There, that's that's it. That's the issue. We 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 know the plan. Now, how do we execute it? I, that's what I want to. I want to. I want to start executing because we talked about it Trial earlier. There. We talked about it earlier offline, and I personally feel like four of us. It's four of us in here. I, what what we call? What do we call it? Uh, activators. What what word do we use? Was it activators? Because I think basically, sound about right. We basically we're in this in this window where we know what to do, but how do we do it? And we said men like us, we're like activators. Like if we can understand like the problem, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like for a Jerry curl. You had Jerry. the curl, did you? Stop, 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 <laughs> stop your with it. You owned the curl. Oh yeah, I had a curl. Didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Full bloom. I had I had, Easy I, had curl. I had the California curl and I, I was down. Yeah, south. with the shag, the shag in the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ready, ready for the world, baby. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> so yes, that uh that type of activator. Uh, okay. And we how we approach everything is important. And me and Lenny, it, it's cool if you talk about this again. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah. So me and Lenny was like, if whatever you're talking about, I don't know. Okay, cool. If you approach things at a, a at a more godly level, like if if how you live your life is aligned in a in a more godly sort of manner, where that's you focus on that and then you focus on self, and then the next thing would be to make sure I represent myself well, doing one and two again. Make sure I'm always representing myself well doing these two things and everything I do in life, uh, it becomes easier to talk to people right. and help them. Right? Hey, you know what? To that point, I was watching uh, Dave Ch uh, Chappelle when he uh, accepted that award. It was like a couple of months uh, ago. Mark Twain Award. Yeah, and he was saying how his mom used to uh, get off work and then drive and be sitting at the back of the uh, comedy club falling asleep and he was like she used when she was driving him home she used to tell him uh uh because he was like mom i don't like being tough i don't like doing this, this and he said she told him something that he always remembered that you have to live like uh you have to be a lion to live like the lamb that you want to be 
Mm. To live in that peace. To and live in that. Yeah, to live mm -hmm. and uh, you know, bring up the other generation, uh, affect the other men around you. Sometimes you have to be that lion to be that lamb and to be able to share all of that. Yeah, I remember that. And it's it's hard. It's hard trying to be that. Why? And nobody why is it hard? Because if you if your sole focus is not to be that, then you're plagued by everything else. So that you don't know? sound like it's hard. That sounds like a choice. No, 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 it doesn't. You need you need to. No, you said it's hard. What what's hard about it? Then how do you attain it? Since it say, since it ain't nothing hard about it, Marvin. How well, do I think you he said it? what's hard about being true to yourself. What's hard about being true it's, to you? And I, I'm 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 going off of that. Okay. What, what is hard? How, how how is that easy? How do you become true to yourself as a person? Being true to yourself is being natural to your your what you were created in the image of, right? That it should come natural to you. Why is anything hard? So you know, why if we, if, if we have if we have I'm two, we, I'm gonna two go back and I'm gonna go back and back with you. I'm, no, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt you every time because yeah. everything you about to say is right. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so like we got we got two brothers, right? We got, uh -huh. we got two brothers with twelve million dollars in the bank, right? right. Uh, both of them brothers lose everything, lose all their money, lose all their houses, lose all their cars, lose everything. Right. Right. Dead broke, wife gone, kids gone, dog don't like them. No, everybody gone. Right. And stuff. One of them brothers decides, you know what? I'm going to go rebuild my fortune. I'm going to go get back on this bike. I'm going to ride again. It's no big deal. The other brother looks at it and goes, man, you know what? I can't take this no more. I'm going to go, you know, use dope. I'm going to shoot myself in, in, in my life. Right. That means the situation itself isn't what's hard. It's the perspective that those brothers have of the situation that's hard, right? That, that makes it hard for them, right? Correct. So nothing is hard for us. It's the way we perceive a situation. Um, excuse me. It's the way that we receive a situation that becomes hard. Sure. If, we, if we understand exactly what we are and we're returning to our true nature, that's the easiest thing on the earth. It's the most natural thing that we could do because everything that's natural to us is good for us. Everything that's harmful to us is unnatural to us anyway. We're just moving back. We gotta stop this. We gotta no. stop. We gotta stop. No, no, this, no. Because we no. should be getting paid for this. No, no, no. Don't hold stop. On, hold stop. On. Stop the show. Stop no, the show. Listen. No. This is a lot of free game is given to some lames out here understanding <laughs> who they' supposed to be. Because you no. gotta understand, you can't help nobody until you understand who you' supposed to be. No, you can't do nothing for nobody. He give a lot of free game. I'm trying to. We even set up for that, man. I need. We need to get paid for this. This, the game is to be sold, not told. Yes, and I'm still saying no, because yeah, I, you a hater. Yeah, I am a hater. Day one. I am a hater. Day one. I'm Day a hater, one. And, I'm, ahead, and I'm about to show you why I'm hating. Go ahead, Earl. Because there's a 15 year old right now who don't know a goddamn thing of what he's talking about, and okay. he's speaking facts. Okay, he's that's speaking, his mama fault. That's his daddy. Wh who, whatever, whatever you want to say. I'm upset that it's a 14. That's who I'm charging. I'm charging his parents with the shit. Because at, at, at 13 and 14, I would have at least been like, man, that's crazy. But I'm 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 positive that there are numerous kids who don't wouldn't have a, a clue what he's talking about. Now, if he said that to me at, thir at us at 16, we'd have been like, hold on now. Hold on, he owns something right here. I mean, no, nah, I might be saying, man, you trying to kick knowledge. <laughs> I might hit with that real quick. It was a different time, too, different place. You gotta understand everybody has they uh they they reckoning or come at uh it's it's it's, it's different times, right? In your life depends on where you come from, your experiences. Some people don't really ever realize it until it's that flashing light and it's it's over for you. You know what I'm saying? Like people go their whole life not really understanding it. And you I know, I don't want to put it in an extreme. But you know you're you're right, and that's why I say it's hard because that's your outlook. Like if 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 you can't well, figure, I, I think that's what he just said. Your perspective, you, your perspective that's, that's coming at it. You know, if you perceive it's hard, oh man, I I can't turn this around. I can't do this. But if you had a perspective that you know what, I'm not gonna let uh, where I come from, uh, what didn't happen to the other men in my family. And uh, no matter what that is, I'm gonna go ahead and be the best that I can be. Go ahead, Lenny. So you talk about Marlo said that or the guy in the video said that? 
the guy in the video. You talking about the guy in the video said that I raised bullshit. But if you said Marlo said it, it made good sense. Not Marlo, Marlo with your partner. I'm tripping. Yeah, you know. Uh, but uh, the guy in the video, uh -huh. he went talking. He wasn't capping on shit. We could put that. And for all the purposes, the man from the video appears to be a good man, and to his family and friends, he probably is a good person. But his ideal, how he thinks about the global picture, is flawed. You know, I'm, I just think it's a. But I'm the biggest thing is on my own show. I am confused. Who is the man? And who's my doctor? This doctor, uh, Dr. Pauls. This is a Lapeef Let's Talk show with your host Swerve and Ever. We're gonna, re we gonna reset it today. We're talking about, about uh, Dr. Pauls. All right, Dr. Lecture. Body Bachman, the lecturer. You saying that the lecturer, yeah, he's flawed, he's flawed, but us, we're pure, he's flawed. All right, so I'm I'm still sticking with that hard because Wait, what, what, go ahead. I, I missed it. I had to step away. I had to take a phone call. So you're saying that a 15 year old that that doesn't understand anything would would assume that what I was saying or or, or life would be hard based on their circumstances or their their perspective of not knowing. They wouldn't understand it, and and to try to jump from not understanding to understanding that process is hard. Well, they're not supposed to. Understand. That's not my that's not my point. We're not. They're not supposed to understand a 15 year old uh, young man wouldn't understand it. We're supposed to be modeling that so they can see it. For the first 14 years of your, uh, your life, all you're doing is imitating what you see anyways. So you need to see more young men, uh, walk um, more men that are mature, that are that are um, walking in their purpose, live that way. You have to see that modeled in you so you can imitate it. Your, your heroes, your mentors, and things like that. For the next 14 years of your life, all you're doing is solidifying what you've learned that for, for first 14 years. You're not going to understand the words that I'm saying until you're 27 or so when your brain starts making sense. And if you're using drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, it's going to set you back more. So what I got to do is I got to spend my life living correctly, modeling that example, taking and, and, and using my innate power um, and, and empower myself to change my environment. So I, I live this way so that we can live, we, we can reach other people and lift them up. You know what I'm saying? That's why we talk about each one, teach one. You know, my job isn't to sit there and convince a 15 year old to change his mind. My job is to model the right behavior and see myself interacting with that person at the proper moment, the proper time to give them what they need right then to plant that seed or water that seed that's already there. Now, now, do we have anything that supports that? Oh, yeah. In mass, because you said, "Oh yeah, like any like my my brother up there can go and put his son in something like that right now." Yeah, we've been doing this. Like I, the people that I associate, we've been doing this for forty seven years. It's the oldest Pan African group in America, for, for, oldest Pan African spiritual group in America. We've been living and modeling this for years. You know what I'm saying? Our our ancient ancestors have been doing this. What's the name of the group, time. brother? Yes, please hear the name of the group. Oh, <laughs> Asar. What's the name Society. of the group, brother? Asar Set Society. All right. Uh, Fire Set Society. Ryan Neffer, our man, Shekham Ryan Neffer, our man, started it um, in 1973. Wrote Maduna Tear and 47 other books on African spirituality, been modeled us ever since. You know what I mean? There are groups in, in pockets all around the world. Now, these are just other things that could be done, right? And we're not able to replicate them. Why not? Uh, well, what, what do you... What do you mean? Why can't Did you replicate something that's been done before? Oh, because what you're explaining is a is a change in lifestyle. It's a return to a it's a, it's a return to your original state, but yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a it's a change from your current lifestyle. And the people that you will be the people that we'll be addressing, it it it's a progress to get to that point where you yeah, understand takes, what you're doing. For sure, for sure. It right. takes time. Right. And that that right there is what we've we've not conditioned ourselves for we we're not as in, intelligent as we should be what well, yeah we, we have some growing to do and we have some lives to live the thing about the society the world that we live in too we've been taught that we got one life to do it in and so Correct. we got to rush and get it over with right now Correct. we understand as african people you know melanated people that we've been here since the beginning of the time, we're our own, we're our own ancestors, and we're you know? gonna be here until it ain't none. So I got, so I got multiple lifespans to get this together. You know what Correct. I mean? I don't have to rush. I might not reach perfection this lifetime, but that's not a big deal. You know, my name, my 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 purpose is to figure out my purpose and to yes. live in that purpose and return to peace, which is my true nature. Yeah, you know what I mean? And learn the life lessons that I'm supposed to do right now. Figure out my destiny. You know what I mean? And, and to your point, we're in the destiny season right now. This is the new moon starting tonight. Oh, so okay. Well, thank you for thank you for that. <laughs> I appreciate that info, right? Hey, there. let me tell y'all something. 
This this brother Marlo brought in the PEDs tonight. No, that's a rule. You PEDs. No, no, no. Anybody watching this see Marlo, he got the PEDs on heavy. He on that Sammy Sosa, Barry Boss. Heavy. <laughs> heavy right now. Hey, it's it's all great you talk, though, right? What's because that? these things, we can't change. We can't turn on any station and just hear men talk. We can't. We we can't. There's no. Where you nah, gonna send? You can't me? turn on TV you, know, so you won't hear honest black men talk on TV. What was that? What, what the name fuck did y'all just say? Man, you listen, man. If you say Stephen A. Name again, man, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get on the Stephen Southwest a. flight to Dallas. And yeah, Max Dallas Kellerman, Fort Worth. Man. Oh, listen, come on, Max man. Kellerman more down for the cost of Stephen A. Is that's a legit me. That's yeah, a legit me. I said it. Hey Max, hey, you, holla at me. You got Max, your, holla at me, Max. Hey, you got your boy with uh that be on that skill, skill. Come on, skill, skill. So listen, listen. <laughs> See, the problem is we understand this, right? At all times of the conversation, Skip Bayless know that Shannon Shark kick his ass. Right. He know that. Right. It's a different, it's a different conversation. Shannon <laughs> is making money, but Skip no push kind of shove. Shit to get the moving in. Real fast. I gotta be respectful at all times. Some furniture get the moving around. Yeah, Shannon Sharp's a real man. He's just playing the game. I I don't respect the game, but I don't fault black men that play the game. I don't fault Stephen A. Smith. He just playing the game. Yeah. But don't no black man hold him up to me as some uh you know some lore. Not at all. But I respect the game. I, yeah. I don't think nobody's doing that. Not on this panel. You just did it. You just did it. You that did. was a joke, Lenny. Just, okay, Le, Le, Lenny. Oh, I am not a hoe. <laughs> You're saying it. You're saying it in a sarcastic manner. So if somebody watches That's the don't beauty know you, of the joke, they may not know you. Say, you got satire in your body. And if, hey, he, if he's let it roll, Lenny only they don't jokes. know you don't mess with. He Steve don't man. get nobody else jokes. He only no. get his. No. 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 That's the catch. No. That's that's what I, that's, that's my. Hey, um, hey, that's the bit. <laughs> that's the bit. <laughs> no one's funny with me. You said something funny? I don't think it's funny. No, I don't think that shit was funny at all, nigga. She was lightweight lame. No, I feel I feel it was offensive. Hey, and I think this should this should really be a daily thing. Like we should you should actually talk to men <laughs> every day. <laughs> Cause look, man, this shit is crazy out here. I think I think the bigger thing is 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 on a regional thing. We talked about this before me and Ron there's just uh, it don't got to be a virtual thing, but uh, black men in most communities getting together, set a time, day, and place to talk about the, the signs of the times. Yeah. And working together, and cooperating, understanding who do what, what links fit, how we can further uh, progress ourselves as a community. We just, we so used to not speaking to each other, to look at each other's adversaries, it's just breaking down that wall that would be beneficial for a lot of black men across America. And I want to let that what he said connect to that Easter egg because that's what that those people the Easter egg back? Right back. yeah because Len, you got you guys have been speaking everything y'all been saying when you go and read that you, you've been talking about this narrative and they're saying that these these things are necessary like there are there are people who understand the times and and they're trying to make changes you need to make way for them you need to you know for an Easter egg. No, the Easter egg is like a hidden hidden thing. Yeah. You know, Marvin, he, don't he be like that. Marvin is 76 years old. <laughs> but the Easter, Easter egg. The Easter egg Everybody is something talking. that's hidden that you find in the message or movie or theme you can pull out amongst other people that find it that the general population don't see. I think that's how people code things. You know, yeah, like coding. I, yeah, as, I, as I get older, I, I see that people who know a lot and or have very specific agendas, things are coded. And you know the way they they word everything, it, it lets you le know what their agenda kind of kind of is. Do, and, and he, led, he, led, he led with that. He led with that. Do you, and, and, and people in the same theme understand that? Oh, this is something. This is, oh, I see what he did. Sign the object, but mm -hmm. you have to be amongst that to understand it. Sometimes, but it's not like Easter, like the Easter Bunny, or candy, and eggs and shit like that. Not at all. Yeah. Thanks, Marvin. So no Cadbury chocolate. Not, definitely not chocolate. Is that the one with the stuff inside? Yeah, yeah cream. So you like chocolate or cream in it, huh? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where, I see where we go with this. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. So, balls on the Canterbury Bunny, Easter Bunny, 
if you eat chocolate infused with goo, pause on that as well. Pause on all of it. So listen, we still don't know what uh, cultural Marxism is. Yeah, uh, we have a very general idea of what Marxism is. And I don't. I, that's not a thumbs up for me. Is anybody else? Is that that's not a thumbs yeah, up? Yeah, I've I've studied it in the past, but it is what it is at this point. But I've studied in the past. Hetero Marvin, is that something y'all cool with? I, I, a Marxist sort of agenda? I understand it. I understand the term. Yeah, you know, we had to we had to study it in, in business yeah. uh, and you know, economics. Then, right. The the major part, part of it is part economics, economics, right? Studies, yeah. Yeah, and and the way he explains it is like it's it morphed because it didn't do what it was supposed to do, so now it turned into this thing called cultural Marxism, which is not a, a an economic thing; it's more of a political sort of psychological thing. Like that's what he was trying to tell us. That political talking point. But Marxism yeah. never was adopted in America. It's just it's just ideas. People expound on theories. There are key. Dr- driving theology and here is smart it's capitalism do you feel what it is do you feel that there's a constant push to change that word that what was it hegemony oh homogenics so he man listen he was throwing a high level words on a routine basis but hold on now hold on you 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 looked it up now do you feel that there's an attack on that because i agree no 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 from what i read yeah from what i read it was not attack on that I think he might have been using it incorrectly from the brief reading I read. I also don't trust this man. Listen, I think he's all fluff. It's it's a look, and he doesn't know how to properly dress himself. I don't. I really I, don't trust the man that can't color scheme a suit. If people keep pushing narratives that um we have a problem with stuff, it's not it's not good for us, right? If people keep saying that we're gonna have issues, like you can't say I'm racist because if I if that's what my the people did before me, you can't judge me for that. Like that's not our narrative. We don't talk like that, but it's something that is being pushed as if it's supposed to help us. Like that's that's a problem, correct? For that to be a narrative for anything. Yeah, there's definitely an issue around that, you know. Oh, okay, and and these is with the like critical race theory. Like that's what it's breaking down to. It's. Well, it's a lot of it's a lot of allowing this educational process or induction, you know, this, this process of, of of literally brainwashing us, right? Like they're, they're, when we when we're going to school and, and learning, or we're using mass media to to consume information, we're literally just taking our knowledge and scraping it out of our head and putting what somebody else thinks inside of it, you know, to be yes. simple about it. And um, we have to get away from that, you know, really research terms, really research and understand where this stuff is coming from. And again, you know, I'll keep saying it. We got to return to our true nature. You know, if we break down what we are, we're not we're not persons anyway. The, the word person means through sounds. Right. So I'm not a person. A person is my vehicle. Right. That's my body. What, what are we talking about? I'm, I'm consciousness and will. We got to understand what we are. We got to get back to that piece. Right. And then we got to identify with that as we as we take that out in, into the world. So we got to get back to our, our serious roots. But these people have um, the society that we live in has really kind of taught us to identify with our animalistic nature, identify with our emotions and our, our feelings and to carry that out in the world. You know what I mean? And then, you know, give us terms for those feelings and those emotions that further separate us. And that's on both sides of the fence. We got a lot of work to do. But um, yeah. Now, it's unfortunate that the stuff that we have to start doing is associated with other people you know and, and the people that is associated with they're almost like our oppressor like 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 they're harming us because they're trying to live and be this greater thing mm-hmm. like that's a that's a narrative that is true but that ain't every single one of them and you know and the narrative is something we need to attack well, but we we can't attack everybody because of the narrative is that uh, making sense yeah, it makes perfect sense. Have you ever, have you ever seen a buff dude that didn't lift no weights? <laughs> yeah, I have. I have. You know, I mean, like, no, I I have. Mean, like, like, have you built muscle without lifting nothing? You know what I mean? Like, you got to do some. Oh work. yeah, that's what you saying, but I see it's, where people. It's a rarity. Cuts, it's a, like, it's a rarity. Yeah. What's going what you gotta, on in your family? You got to do some work, right, to get. To, yeah, to got to get work to get progress. And yes, so sir. we're dealing with we're dealing with constraints. We're dealing with restrictions and limitations in order to get strong. We're here for that. We're built for that, right? 
we, if we didn't have that resistance, we wouldn't tap in to our, our, our true nature anyway. You know what I mean? If I had, if I was born in this world with no limitations, if I was born, um, you know, uh, with all of my faculties, I never aged. I, I had all of this understanding. I'm not going to strive for any excellence. I'm just there. Able you know body. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we gotta, we gotta push. We came here for that. <laughs> all right. Well, but anyway, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bounce. All right, man. Hey, that was great. That Thanks for shouting out, man. Shout out to Heru, uh, man. Hey. Look, shout, shout out to man. Appreciate you, brother. Tell him your Instagram. Tell him your Instagram before you get out of here, man. Oh, I'm at Heru Nefer. H-E-R-U-N-E-F-E-R. All right, I'll make sure I put it in the comments on the YouTube page so when people Sir, try to see you, they go, hey, man, love you, man. Definitely. Hey, man, that brother Marlowe's it, it's hilarious. <laughs> that, that last hit was hilarious. <laughs> Able body. <laughs> that was great. That made me laugh. That genuinely had me laugh. <laughs> oh Lord! All right, man. all right, man. We 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 didn't did our we didn't did our thing. I'm I'm really appreciative of all the non viewers we had. Thank you for saw 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 Hey Rule again. What's right, Instagram again? What you say? Hey, I hit you. Hey Rule's Instagram. You think I remembered that? I'm gonna I'm gonna go fly, find it on Instagram and type. Make sure you put it in the description, man. It was a lot of knowledge right there. Man, Marlo really, uh, you know, he uh, he on PEDs tonight. I appreciate it, brother. That brother was really in tune, you know. But uh, yeah, the dude that was speaking, that the, the, the basis of this video was built on a castle, built on bullshit bricks. But we brought it through and gave some perspective on it. But yeah, I don't agree with that man at all. If I saw that man in the next 48 hours in the streets and remember him, we would have a conversation. I have to uh, agree with Lenny. Like I said, I reached out to y'all because I heard one guy speaking about it and, you know, went and read up on it and then saw this video. And I'm still unclear of what cultural Marxism is. You know, he... I think this is the beauty spoke, of cultural he Marxism. He spoke well, but he didn't, he didn't bring it home for me. I, hey, I think this is the beauty of cultural... Just, hey, it's doing its job. <laughs> it's doing his job well. It's, I, it's I doing his it job well. <laughs> First thing I saw was right wing talking for him. I, I, like, I, I know what it. this is. I love it. I love everybody who's gonna see this video because you're, you're, really, really, you're really Ernie Johnson right now. Ernie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, hey, where my little board at? I'm gonna start right. <laughs> that man's a great Check. public speaker, though. In general, he's a good public speaker. In oh, general, oh yeah. Like you say, them pauses was out of this world. You like? Are you? Are you hey, doing? that Eric put some sauce on it. Eric put some sauce on it. <laughs> He put some How? sauce on it. How? There's no, there's no way for me to do it without you noticing. You would see the. You put the, some sauce on it. I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm not gonna watch the replay. But I'm gonna figure it out. You put some sauce on it. Hey, Hanel says she got to go to work, but uh, she really enjoyed seeing Kings get together and talk. So salute to her. I appreciate beautiful salute sister. Salute to Hanel. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, but yeah, it was, uh, I had a good time, man. That brother, that you was a, a very good uh, energy and light. And man, we just gotta get better videos. You know, we gotta we gotta so these out. I had no I had no problem with that video. I understood every single thing he was saying, and I'm but you very gotta, upset, but listen, and I'm very saying, upset man, that gotta, nobody else did. You got a pink water bottle. And you you heard you know you what I'm saying? Him. Like you the same man drinking with your pinky up with a pink water bottle. So apparently <laughs> I see what side of the situation you are. Hey, that's the same man had us looking for the book of Caribbean in the in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> the First, book of the book of jerk listen, chicken. Listen, the book of Caribbeans, chapter <laughs> jerk chicken, chapter jerk tail. chicken <laughs> with, with 12 chimichangas. Yeah, man. The y'all, y'all, coming for you. All right, y'all man, cast we... was dynamic, man. Yeah, uh, really mm-hmm. wanted to get over here and get on, man. Haru, man, like I say, uh, he's been working with those people that he flew out to uh, Philadelphia. They didn't flew him to New York, so he he's deep in that society, and they, they have a lot of uh, good knowledge and everything, so and nobody wants to nobody wants to participate oh we getting late i don't want to keep it going it's about to go on three hours i'll let y'all it's it's, 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 it's it's keep it simple hey ladies and gentlemen do the work do the work just do the work nobody want to do the work do the work work. (laughs) contribute to the best society yeah and we all hey make sure you like and subscribe and and share with your friends who like looking at it unlike unsubscribe leave leave comments but make sure they negative comments always leave negative comments and dislikes but just leave a comment. But definitely leave I a comment. I really don't know what's negative and what's not. So just leave a comment. Just let us, just leave a comment. Just anything like, yo, you like your breath. Let me know how we rocking with us. Let Part me know if you're tired of me cutting off Irv 
or if you <laughs> appreciate this dynamic. That's the only way we get better as a unit. As a unit, we appreciate it, man. All right, man. Yeah, I'm out. All right, fam. All right, Lenny. All right. Y'all be easy. <laughs>